the evening college football fans and welcome to tonight's broadcast between the West Texas A&M Buffaloes and the Angelo State Rams here from beautiful Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. It's homecoming for the hometown maroon and white Buffaloes. And with that comes many exciting events and activities for the student body, the fans, and really the entire community throughout the week. And so a lot goes into homecoming week here at WT and the finishing touch is obviously what takes place here on the gridiron for the next three hours. I'm Lucas Kinsey alongside Bryce Sheets and we're glad to have you with us for this Lone Star Conference uh, matchup here tonight between the Buffaloes and the Rams. Happy homecoming, partner. Happy homecoming and a good crowd should be here tonight. Heard all the festivities, heard all the hoopla and everything else from the tailgate. So hopefully that filters through. Well, tonight we have a game between two talented teams who right now are going in opposite directions. Five games into the season, WT has lost its last two games in close fashion. Two weeks ago here at home, a loss to number five ranked Colorado School of Mines, 21 to 13. And then last Saturday, the Buffs on the road at Western Oregon in a bit of a surprise uh, to the Buffs fans at least. WT gave up a game clinching touchdown to Western Oregon with just 17 seconds left. Angelo State, meanwhile, they've won their last two straight contests, including a big 62 to three win, a uh, blowout over Western New Mexico last Saturday in San Angelo. So Bryce, one side full of confidence while the other team is trying to get back on track. What do you expect to see from these two teams in a rivalry game? Well, of course, for Angelo State, they remember what happened last year, so they want to come out and be ready for what the Buffaloes throw at them today. And they do have a lot of confidence. Four and one coming into this one. Midwestern State's the only loss. And of course, we know all about Midwestern State. And so what they want to see tonight is with their starting quarterback coming back tonight, see how he fits in and then also to see what they can do to stop what their front seven can do to stop the Buffaloes from running the football, which has been a strength as of late, and make them throw the football. For WT, the defense has to come out and play. Yeah, Last week, they did not. They had showed little emotion in that game at Western and Oregon, and so what they need to do, especially our front seven, is come out and play. And uncharacteristically, I think our secondary was off a step or two last week, which was very unusual for the way they've played all season long. So we need the defense to come out, and we need the offense to come out and get off to a hot, a hot start. You mentioned this is a rivalry. You might see uh, the trophy right behind yes. us, right? It's the golden mouth of the South trophy, which uh, goes to the winning team broadcaster. And right now, it's been in Canyon, Texas for the last year because the Buffs won this game last year. So you polished it up and got it all. Yeah, got, got the thing polished up. So right. Jeremy Bryant from Angelo State, we are good friends. 364 days yes. out of the year, right? Yes. But not not tonight. Yes. So West Texas A&M, they'll have the home field advantage, especially on homecoming night here in Canyon. But Angelo State, they are very happy to play the role of the villain here at Buffalo Stadium. They want nothing more than to spoil the party here for West Texas A&M. After a quick timeout, we'll hear from Buffs head coach Hunter Hughes. It's the Buffaloes and the Rams in a conference showdown here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and also on News Channel 10 too. For 90 years, the Lone Star Company. Welcome to Shimon Dental Group, where every day 
We're excited to see our patients and treat them like family. We are dedicated to providing you with the highest quality care in a friendly and comfortable environment. Shimon Dental Group's patient-focused philosophy puts your needs front and center. We are constantly investing in leading edge technology. Innovations that speed the treatment process and improve aesthetics. We're expanding the breadth of our cosmetic and restorative services through training to provide the best possible outcomes. Just with the level of commitment that they show to taking care of my family and I, it's absolutely unmatched in this town, so I've been very happy with them. Brightening smiles for more than three decades. Contact Shim and Dillon Group for your appointment today. Well, I think it's a you can I look at it as a new season because uh, their quarterback that played both those games has been injured, um, and uh, I don't know if he's coming back this week. Um, I'd be I'm actually hoping uh, he doesn't because he's a really good football player and he's the starter there for a reason. But on all honesty, that team doesn't need a quarterback. They just need a guy to hand the ball off because they can run and run, and they are big, they are physical, they have backs that can go, and then they will pull it out of the back, and they got a quarterback that can put the, you know, their backup quarterback, who's been now it's his fourth start, I think, third or fourth start. He might as well be a starter now with the experience he has. He's more than a backup quarterback. Uh, they don't, they don't ask him or have not yet asked him to do as much as. Uh, the starter did um, but man you can see confidence in him with the running game and then pulling out and hitting receivers and he hits them on stride and uh, so he's gotten better in check better, one so two check Mike this check be one heck two. Of a challenge for our defense against these guys this week and uh, defensively they're extremely athletic uh, overall athletic wise this is the most athletic team we've played to this point so you know, if, if we can come out and have a high energy and uh, try not to run into ourselves on the way out the tunnel and continue to do that on the field where we run into ourselves and beat ourselves to death, and, uh, again, I think we can play with them. Oh, yeah, because they've run. I mean, to me, I look at it, there's two different offenses. Uh, and they, they'll, they're going to be in a big physical run game look. It's a tight end in there inside. Uh, off the ball, it's basically a two-back look, but they're big and physical at the tight end. Uh, and then you know, they'll spread it out. And I just think that uh, they want to run the football. Again, I, I've seen them go four wide. I've seen them put guys out in different games, and so it's kind of like a tail of two offenses. Uh, but they've had the, this, this backup. Uh, as, uh, he, he's, he's run that spread offense. And the, when I say spread, it's not five wide. It's just not the typical in that box going to run the over and be physical. Uh, and yet they still run this type of play. So, he's capable of doing it. And again, the more games he's played and the more starts he's get, the more confident he's going to be, uh, more confident he's going to be to be able to do that kind of stuff. So uh, I expect them to be very physical up front uh, in whatever they do. They're going to the gap scheme and block down and pull, and uh, they're going to play good, hard, smash mouth football. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC.
of more about what's going on with Angelo State down in San Angelo. We head down to the field and standing by is Kent Johnson. Kent, what can you tell us? Well, Bryce, Lucas, this is an Angelo State team that's playing with a lot of confidence right now. They're 4-0 and overall. They've won two in a row. Most recently, a dominating 62-3 win at home last week against Western New Mexico. Their only loss has been to nationally ranked Midwestern State. They're also road tested. 3-0 and thus far this year with wins at Lindenwood, Chadron State, and Central Washington. Very hostile environments to play football they've won in all three last week's game against western new mexico as we say 62 to 3 saw angelo state finish with 629 yards in total offense eight touchdowns freshman quarterback haven garvin earned his second win in as many starts he completed 11 of 16 with four touchdowns but it wasn't all through the air freshman running back Kaysen phillips had 125 yards and two touchdowns on the ground as a team the Rams lead the LSC in rushing offense with an average of 230 rushing yards per game. That's good for 13th overall in Division II. But it's not all offense. Defensively, for the second week in a row, the Rams did not allow a touchdown. The Mustangs kicked their only field goal late, late in the fourth quarter. As a team, this Ram defense has only allowed 287 yards rushing for the season. That's 57 yards a game. Very stingy up front. It's all lowest among the LSC and ninth among all D2 teams. Try and throw it on them. Well, they've picked off four interceptions, which ranks second among the LSC. So, talking to head coach Jeff Gersh and defensive coordinator Adam Clark, the Rams keys control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, run the football on offense, dare the opponent to throw the football against them. Buffs are going to have their work cut out for them tonight, but they're going to have a mega crowd behind them celebrating this homecoming in 2021. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, Lucas and Bryce will set the starting lineup as well as break down the keys to tonight's game. You're watching Buffalo Football on the LSC Digital Network and News Channel 10 too. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guides you every step of the way. That is the J. Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call J. Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are J. Ferg Roofing. We are more. Welcome back to Buffalo Stadium. Lucas Kinsey alongside Bryce Sheets. We appreciate Kent Johnson down there on the sideline, obviously talking about an Angelo State team. Bryce, that is uh, full of confidence, and we understand they may be getting their original starting quarterback back, even though we saw what the backup did in the last two games. <laughs> yeah, and so they didn't miss a beat. He won two in a row for them, and so now when you get your starter back, that kind of changed a little bit as far as the mentality is concerned, especially in the run game. And so, again, a team that likes to run the football, and so it's going to be one of those where they'll get used to the cadence again real quick, which they've already done in practice this week anyway, but it's getting him comfortable and making sure everything he's doing is the way that they want to see the Rams move the football. This Rams team, 4-1 and one overall record. Their only loss came to Midwestern State, yeah. which until last week they were unbeaten, and so a lot of people feel like Midwestern State is maybe in the driver's seat in the Lone Star Conference. But go back to that loss for Angelo State. They were leading early in that game. They were in it 
until the starting quarterback, Zach Bronkhorst, hurt his shoulder. He went out. That was the first uh, action this year for Hagen Garvin, and so he was trying to get his feet wet. Angelo State loses that one. Then they come back with really two impressive wins. They go at Central Washington, and we know that's a tough place to win. It is. a tough place to play. And they won 14-9. to The last two games, this Rams team, they've only allowed field goals, no touchdowns. Yeah, and the thing about it is they really got in sync when they took on Western New Mexico. That was, a, I believe, 61-3 to win or yeah. right around that. It was, it was a very convincing win. Uh, over Western New Mexico, we got to see uh, the Mustangs here, and so we we had a very comfortable win, mm -hmm. but they had a convincing win, and so that kind of sets it up for tonight and lets you know that you really got to come out of the gate and got to get ready to go because this Rams team is going to be ready. They love being on the road, and they love coming here to play. The series, you look at the all-time series, Angelo State leads 19-14. to 14. They've won five of the last seven. Last year it was an interesting year, right? Right. With, with all with the stuff COVID that went on. everything, yes. But So the two teams played twice, yes. right? They, Angelo State, for, uh, on, the, on the road, the Buffs lost in San Angelo. Right. And they came back here when we had that game, and it was a close game, and yes. the Buffs were able to escape with a win. And so these two teams seem to always play close. Well, and there's been a rivalry going on for a while. I mean, we do have a lot of different teams that we look at for different things, but Angelo State in particular is one of those that really is one you want to go after in a big way. We'll take a quick time outcome right back with more pregame after this. joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints, we're restoring lives. years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Welcome back to Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium as West Texas A&M gets set to take on Angelo State in a rivalry game uh, tonight in front of a homecoming crowd. And so, Bryce, we were talking about the Angelo State Rams. Let's continue kind of giving a, a Buff Nation a preview of what they're going to see tonight. And we'll start offensively with the Rams. And when you talk about the Rams offensively, you got to talk about some really good running backs. Well, yeah, they have some strong running backs. And, again, when you kind of take a look at what they're able to do, it's not just that two and three yards in a cloud of dust, but it's big chunks of the running game and that's what's made a big difference for them so far this season and so that's what they want to try to establish that's where they feel they can dominate uh, they have the pass that can intertwine in there from time to time but yeah it's setting up the run game and the, they're showing some defensive highlights there and so defensively for Angelo State pressure 
pressure all night long. The defensive coordinator we know well, Adam Clark, former coach over at Western New Mexico, and he won at Western New Mexico. He made a choice, obviously, to, to make the change to go to Angelo State and become the defensive coordinator there. And since he's come to Angelo State, that's kind of been their mantra is they're going to be a team that's going to apply a lot of pressure. They're going to blitz. Sometimes they'll give up some pass plays because of that, but they want to force turnovers. They want to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Well, they really are, and they want you to try to get out of your rhythm. And so when you are throwing the football, obviously you're going to make a mistake. That's where their secondary capitalizes on it. And so that's what they're counting on. They want that good pressure up front from the front seven. They want them being able to put what uh, a little bit more than adequate pressure, really solid pressure on you. And that allows their secondary to get free and come up with big interceptions. Defense, they're ninth in the country uh, in rushing yards allowed. And how about this? Only 57 yards yeah. per game given up yeah. on the ground. WT loves to run the football. So yes. there's your matchup right and, there. And that's really where it's going to be. Can the offensive line get off the schneid a little bit? Can they make a push? Can they get two and three yards ahead and then allow the running game to get going? And we need to see the running backs kind of exploit. If there is a hole, they need to exploit it. Angelo State offensively, we talked about those running backs. We're going to see Nate Amayabu. We're going to see uh, perhaps C.J. Odom. He's uh, been uh, had an injury for the last couple of games. We'll also see Alfred Greer, who is a talented back. We saw him last year. Right. And then a freshman, Cason Phillips. So no matter who's back there, they're running behind a veteran offensive line. And that's the key. Obviously, when you have upperclassmen that can really make things happen, that can, again, push the pile back a little bit. That allows the running backs to get that two, three, four-yard kind of push. Uh, that's what's been ex been great for them this year. Alfred Greer, by the way, is one of those that we do remember him from last year. Bryce, he's only 5'6", <laughs> but he is powerful. He's a, bo he's a bowling ball, and so that we do remember him. And the thing is, he really comes with a really solid force. All right, let's turn our attention to West Texas A&M, and let's talk about the Buffs' keys to the game. And the first one that I've got, Bryce, is simply – play as a team. Yeah. They, they did not do that on the road last Saturday at Western Oregon, and that's why I think the coaching staff was so disappointed. I think the players were disappointed as well. They put up all kinds of yards. They went up and down the field with Western Oregon, but you already mentioned it defensively. They gave up over 550 yards of offense, and so the Wolves offense got going, but when we say play as a team, uh, it, it's easy when you have a heartbreaking loss like that that you right. were expected to win. Right. For everybody to start pointing fingers, the right. Buffs cannot do that. No, they can. They've got to have good communication and again what they need to do is get off to a quick start tonight the offense needs to get off to a better start the defense really that front seven really needs to play as a cohesive unit what we saw last week there was not a lot of emotion there was not a lot of good communication out yeah. there with chris thomas back this week hopefully that'll change and make things a little different for the for the defense and then the offense we just need to see nick gerber take control and move the football all right so speaking of the defense that's the second key this defense must be physical they must play with energy like you said and passion in front of this homecoming crowd and then partner they have got to force some turnovers only three turnovers forced all season by this WT defense yeah so they haven't put themselves in an opportunity to try to force some miscues and so hopefully they're able to do that now it'd be tough this will be a tough order against a very talented Angelo State team but if they can do that they've got to be ready to pounce on the ball when it's available two interceptions one fumble recovery for that Buffalo defense the last thing is going back to offense and uh, with Nick Gerber and the wide receivers you have to keep this Angelo State defense honest you cannot allow them to put seven guys in the box and just bring pressure all night. Got to get some quick screens. Got to get some throws down the field to loosen up that defense. You've got to keep them guessing. And so that's what the conversation is. Are they too predictable? Can you really tell what the offense is doing and maybe get a step ahead? And so you've got to mix that up. You've got to be unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need for Russ Martin and the offense to do tonight. All right. Let's take a look at West Texas A&M starters, and we'll look at the offensive starting lineup first for the Buffaloes. And so as we look at this offensive starting lineup, Nick Gerber, obviously the quarterback. Khalil Harris has been the hot running back. In fact, leads the Lone Star Conference with 520 rushing yards, four touchdowns. Receivers, there's been a few injuries, so we're not exactly sure who we will see uh, wide receiver-wise. We do know Caleb Olison and also Noah Bogardus. He's been very good as well. We expect to see him. And there's your X-Factor tonight, X-Bar Steakhouse X-Factor. It's Jeremy Carnbay. We saw him three weeks ago on the road at UTPB, catch a couple of passes, have a touchdown. He's a talented guy. He's a big target. They need him to get involved. Well, yeah, absolutely. We need to get the tight ends involved. And that's where you have that unpredictability because we have not been going to them very much. So if you mix it up a little bit, get them more involved, then they can get, they can get up the field. They can get north and south. 
and use Nick or use Corn Bay because he is such a big guy. Use that big frame to get up the field. Offensive line, Adam Alcorta, left tackle, Jacoby Lott, left guard, Zane Madison, the mullet, right, uh, running the center position. Patrick Gray gets a start at right guard. And then Parker Hanna, the shark, at right tackle. Parker, the 6'5", 295-pound junior from Stratford, Texas. So those are your offensive starters. We'll turn our attention now to the defense for West Texas A&M. And uh, this Thursday on the Coaches Show, I actually had a chance to visit with J.T. Haddon, defensive line coach, associate head coach, and uh, J.T., soft-spoken, but, you know, he, he told me, he said he knows his front seven must be better. This defense, it starts up front with the defensive line, guys like Xavier Rivera, Dylan Mata. We don't know if Jalen Hill will be available tonight. So, Bryce, talk about some of these other guys on the defensive line that might step up. Well, the thing that he likes so much is the young freshman. Michael Smith has been playing fantastic as of late. But also, when you look at Victor Smith, too, he's one of those guys you can count on, kind of depend on. And so the, both those guys, the two Smiths, have really come on a little bit. So we need those up front. And then, of course, you've got to depend on your linebackers, Eric Collins, J.T. Cavender, Cole Oster, who's had some fantastic games of late. And then, of course, Chris Thomas making his way back in. We need those guys really to communicate well and put pressure on what Angelo tries to do in the run game tonight. You see your X bar X factor of the game, Tobias Harris, and he's just only played two games this season, but he's made an impact. He had an interception, had his 13 total tackles, but Bryce, you always talk about this. It's his energy yes. that really matters most to this team. Well, and that's the thing. You need that, You need that. I don't want to say junkyard dog. You want that guy that really kind of wolfs it up and gets things going, and he is that guy. He doesn't mind getting in somebody's face. He has the size disadvantage. He doesn't care. He goes out and plays hard, and we need his energy to make the defense go. In the secondary, you look at uh, Ladarian Hudson making a start tonight. He's a senior and has only played one game. Also want to uh, show some video here and talk about Cole Oster. Cole, one of the linebackers, has been tremendous uh, in the last two games. He's led the team in tackles from that linebacker spot. A freshman out of Castle Rock, Colorado, Cole, second leading tackler, 34 tackles on the season, a fumble recovery. And, Bryce, you really like his energy and what he does from that linebacker spot. Yeah, I really do. And the thing is, of course, he was a D1 signing, went to Montana State and then transferred. And the thing about him is he really flies all over. And we like the way that he plays linebacker. They've moved him to the inside for a couple of games and then back to the outside again. And so tonight he'll be back on the outside. And so that's where he's most comfortable. All right, we're going to step aside for our final timeout. When we come back, the coin toss and the opening kickoff between West Texas A&M and Angelo State here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10 2. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company.
the history of WT who paved the way for students, faculty, and staff today. Coming your way tonight on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10 2. Here's the coin toss as the captains are out there for both teams for Angelo State and for West Texas. Eric Collins, Chris Thomas are out there as well. Uh, for the Buffaloes with Zane Madison and the quarterback that's out there as well, Nick Gerber. And so they are set for this tonight. Angelo State, of course, the visitor in their road white tops, gray pants, and of course the L.A. led yeah, Ram just, helmets. Just like those Los Angeles Rams, right? Yes. And then, of course, the Buffs in their home maru uniforms with white trim, white numerals, and white helmets. As they get set for this one tonight. We are ready for the coin toss. And again, very important Lone Star Conference matchup for both of these clubs. They both one and one in conference play. And so obviously, who comes away with the win tonight has the edge of what's going on in the conference tonight. And that's with this nice crowd here tonight. Hopefully, that brings a lot of energy to the Buffaloes. Captains for the Rams, Zach Bronkhorst, who expected to make the start at quarterback. Number 59, 58, Jacob Neal. Number three, Deshaun Douglas, and also Hunter Kyle. Head referee tonight is Joel Williams, umpire Chris Thames, head linesman Manny Santana, Phil Judge, Rick Lasanama, Thomas Bean, the line judge, Thomas Hubbard, side judge, back judge is Joe Greer, and center judge Jeffrey Thickpin. So Angela State won the coin toss. They've elected to defer, and WT will receive. So the offense will get out there to get things going here tonight, Lucas. And so, again, like we said, we need to see them jump out and get things going early in this one this evening. Said 59, it's 58, Jacob Neal for Angelo State. And then uh, number 69, Alfredo Fernandez. This offensive line for the Rams, we talked about them being a veteran group. Braxton Webb, a senior at the left tackle. Jacob Neal, left guard, he's a junior. The center, Alfredo Fernandez, outstanding player from San Antonio. And then on the right side, the only youngster is maybe their best lineman, Jacob Long, who's 6'3", right. 322 pounds. He's from Waco. And then you cannot miss number 74, Bryce. Willis Patrick is 6'4", 347 pounds. You think a running back doesn't like running behind that guy? They know all they have to do is either go right or left, and then they have an open lane they can get through. So we'll see what happens tonight as they try to go behind Willis Patrick. But again, that's going to be the key defensively for the Buffs. They've got to be able to stop the run. They've got to force the uh, Rams, and especially Zach Bronkhorst back as he's back in the saddle again to get uncomfortable, get out of his rhythm. And hopefully that can take place tonight. And of course, for the Buffaloes and D, we want the offense to get off to a fast start. You know, the coach talked about, and coaches have talked about, it's not hard for the Buffs to get energy here at home, especially with a crowd like this one tonight. It's on the road where they have, they struggle finding the energy. So hopefully as they came out, it looked like they were pumped up and ready to go in this contest tonight. For West Texas A&M, Back to return the kickoff. We'll see if Angelo State kicks to the freshman from Wheeler, Texas. But Heston Marshall Bryce, one of the best in the country right now. He's got a 30-yard kick return average, a long of 55 earlier this season. And he's also averaging 28 yards per punt return. He has been a pleasant surprise as a true freshman this year. Yeah, he really has. And he was a surprise to the coaching staff. That was one of the first things Hunter said uh, this season. Who's one of the bigger surprises? Yeah. to Marshall because they want to be able to use him. They they really were just going to use him on defense, and then they could they saw how quick and rapid uh, his speed was, and so they want to utilize that, and they've been able to do so, and so that's been a nice bright spot, having him as a receiver, wide receiver on offense, then again in the kick game, he can make things happen. These Angelo State Rams ranked number 17 in the country, a 4-1 and one overall record. Their head coach, Jeff Gersh, in his third season back in 2019, an 8-3 overall record. Of course, Coach Gersh was the defensive coordinator here at Angelo State before he took over and uh, took the head coaching job. And so on the other side, Hunter Hughes, 22-22 and 22 overall record in his fifth season. We have seen some great ones between these two teams. Absolutely. I mean, this, again, to me, is one of the better rivalries. They don't call it a rivalry, but I look at it as a big rivalry taking on the Rams, and it should be an energy-packed game tonight. Asa Fuller, 235-pound senior from Fountain Valley, California, puts her right toe into the foot, uh, uh, into the ball, and it goes over the head of Heston Marshall. And so WT will bring it out 
Start from their own 25 yard line. That's an impressive leg there from Fuller. <laughs> He's got a big leg. I was watching him warm ups tonight. He almost kicked it over the fence, over the barrier. And so, yeah, he's got a big leg, and so not afraid to use him if they need to. Of course, his brother, Cade Fuller, is the punter. Both uh, transfers out of the state of California. That's been really the only spot on this Angelo State team that you can be picky about is that they've struggled. They've had three field goals blocked this season. But right now it's WT to start things offensively. First and ten. On their own 25-yard line, it's Khalil Harris, the conference's leading rusher on first down that finds a good hole and is able to gain five yards, and that's a good start there for Khalil Harris, a career game for him last Saturday, Bryce. They, Buff fans thought he had the game-winning touchdown, a 75-yarder, yes. but yes. he scored too soon yes. with four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, too much time left on the clock. And again, running behind Adam Alcorta that time and got a nice game for about five. They send the receiver in motion, second down, swing it out, watch out as that play was blown up. Good defensive play. The catch was made by Bogardus, but Devin Washington just blew right past the receiver that was trying to block him and throws the receiver for a loss all the way back to the 26-yard line. Well, that was Markel Stevens-Peppers who was trying to throw the block that time, and Markel just didn't get enough oomph, get enough push on the defensive back. That's why he was able to blow it up and make the stop. Here's Gerber, and that's incomplete. And I tell you, they read that perfectly because they he looked, he locked in as in his intended target that time, and they were they had two players converging on him in order to make that stop and break up the pass completion. And you see 27 there. That's a receiver we haven't seen all season long. That's Blake Waters, former quarterback, who they've moved over to the wide receiver spot. And so the Rams do a nice job. The three and out, force a punt on WT's first possession. Yeah, not to start offensively, we wanted to get, we wanted to get a fast start. Got a good run on that first play from scrimmage, but then everything bogged down. So Andrew Pitts, who is the Lone Star Conference Special Teams Player of the Week, is back to receive this punt from Aaron Koash. Koash hits at the 35-yard line and takes a decent bounce. WT will down it right at the 30-yard line, so they kind of keep it away from Pitts last week. He had an 80-yard return on a punt, and he had 166 punt return yards. Yeah, so not a bad day at the office for the punt man on the returns as well. Okay, so now we got to see what kind of energy does the WT defense have in this one tonight. We need to see them fat start fast as well, and we really need to see that they are flying to the football. Don't allow the run game. Don't allow that offensive line to have the push that they've had so far that's been successful for Angelo this season. Amaya Boo, the running back. They're going to throw it, though, on first down. Catch is made by the tight end, Dunham, for a short gain, gain of four yards. Dagan Dunham, 235-pound junior from Muleshoe. And he looks bigger than that. That's why I was looking, double-checking to make sure that was the listed weight because he looks a lot bigger than the way they have him listed. On second down. Throw to the outside and a good tackle by the Buffs. The pass was complete on the outside to the receiver, number 80, Kel Williams. But a good job uh, by the Buffs defense. you got to make sure you wrap up, wrap up legs, and they did that. And I know they've talked a lot about that this week. We've got to be able to wrap up. You've got to be able to hit from the waist down. Tobias Harris was in on that tackle that time, and he wanted to doubly make sure that they had the receiver wrapped up for no game. So a third down and short for the Rams. First quarter action, no score here at Buffalo Stadium. Running back shifts to the right. There'll be a throw. It's a flag. It's thrown immediately. The catch is made by the Rams, and if the play stands, it's a first down up to the 45-yard line, but that marker was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. And I'm not too sure the receiver, Rasheen Green, didn't take off before the snap of the ball, and so the officials are talking about it, but it looked like he may have got an early jump on this one. Offside, Outside. defense, defense. penalties decline. WT jumps. That was, that was not the case in that particular one. And so, so a nice pass completion for the first down for Angelo State. So one of the best running teams in the country. Hasn't run it yet. No. They, and they, again, they are mixing it up, trying to keep the defense off balance. Bronkhorst will throw again on the outside, just 
airmailed that one. Tobias Harris in coverage on the outside against Williams. And so it'll be second down. Well, he was step for step on that one. And so the pass from Brockhorst had to be high and it was just too high that time. Sold it over to the Angelo State bench. And so Nate Amayabu, the running back, again, 5.7 yards a carry, 520 rushing yards this season and four touchdowns. He'll get the, you know, they fake it to him, throw it to the outside incomplete. Good and, pass rush by WT. And I think they faked out the receiver on that one too. It's green. He will look back and then he cut to the inside. The pass was to the outside. So a communication issue there between quarterback and receiver. Bryce, are you surprised that we have not seen a rushing play well, yet from Angela State? Again, in our pregame, we talked about, you know, that WT needs to mix it up to be, mm -hmm. you know, not predictable. And right now, that's really what Angelo State is doing. See the stack receiver set both sides. Now they send Kellen Pichot in motion. Third down and long for the Rams. Good protection. Bronkhorst steps into his throw. Complete. And a first down for the Rams. A nice run after the catch. The ball popped free, but the official comes in and says receiver was down after picking up enough yardage for the first down. And the secondary was playing pretty soft on that one. Again, as Pocho was able to kind of catch that one in stride, but he had like a five-yard cushion. And so he was able to get easily to the first down. I thought the bus had him bottled up at first, but then he just kind of pushed forward and made the first down. So Bronkhorst on target on that throw. Here's a run for Angelo State. Chris Thomas in on the tackle as it's a short three-yard run for Amayabu. Boy, it's good to see Chris Thomas back to the 6'3", 200-pound junior from Humble. And again, his presence has been missed the last few weeks. These are the type of games that number 31 loves most, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Going against a team that runs right at you, and Chris Thomas, that's what he does best to stop the run. Second down and seven. Rams bring an extra tight end in the game, and the Buffs do a good job again against the run, and Chris Thomas was back there also. Was that Taylor Hickerson? Yeah, that was a nice push that time from Hickerson as he kind of just knife past the blocker. And again, we talked about that big right tackle for Angelo State, but he just knifed past him and was able to grab a hold of a leg and hold on to make the stop. Well, this WT defense on the season, they're only allowing 114 rushing yards per game. Here's a third and long. Bronkhorst will turn, look to the side, get a play change in. 10 seconds on the play clock. It's third and six Angelo State from the WT 41-yard line. Bronkhorst looking. Now he's going to scramble out of the pocket, throw on the run. Good catch. Uh -oh. And that's going to be a good for a first down as the players dangerously collide into the benches. I'll tell you what, Noah Massey did exactly what you want a receiver to do. He saw his quarterback scrambling, so he broke off his route and curled back and came to him, presented a big target. He was able to make that pass for the first down completion. So look at head coach Jeff Gersh for the Rams, and he liked that play. Noah Massey is 6'4", 230-pound senior out of Houston, a transfer from Bowling Green. Yeah, big target, big body. It'll get that first down. Angelo State right now 4 for 4 on third down. Methodically moving down the field. Brockhorst will throw, trying to... Well, he was looking the direction again of Noah Massey, but that was nice, tight coverage out there from Tobias Harris. And Tobias looked, he turned to the inside, and then he saw the pass was to the outside, didn't allow the receiver to get out there, and then he tried to turn and hurry and get out there, just not quick enough to come up under the football. Trying to get the play in. Again, Angelo taking their time. Nice, methodical drive here for their first possession. Douglas is in it, tight end to the near side. And it's a handoff going outside C.J. Odom, the ball carrier, the junior out of Helmet, California, not able to get really much going on that play. It was a stretch play, and the WT defense was up to the challenge. Yeah, Nate and CJ, both big running backs, those guys that really come at you. And then a couple of smaller backs. We talked about Greer in the pregame show, and again, he's one of those guys like a bowling ball, not quite as big. Now for Greer is the running back out there right now. Well, this has been the money down for the Rams. Again, four 
out of four on third downs on this drive. This is a draw play to Greer, the scat back for the Rams, and he could not find an opening. Is taken down after only a gain of one. Well, they wanted to go to the left side that time. He started that way. The buffs gummed it up, so he had to go back to the right, go around the blockers, and then when he got to the hole, it was filled already and nowhere for him to go. So field goal opportunity for the Rams. Again, the leg is definitely there for Asa Fuller. It's just been a combination of a lot of different things that have led to some kicking woes. They've had several kicks blocked. This one. It's going to be a 41-yard try. The distance is there, and the kick is good. Right down the middle of the Rams. Strike first on a field goal and take the 3-0 lead. 8.39 to play here in the first quarter. We'll step aside, take a timeout, come back with more from Buffalo Stadium after these messages. This is a walk-on athlete. They train long, put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Walk on. We live for this. Well, a nice drive for Angelo State, and they settle for a 44-yard field goal, and that puts them on the scoreboard. Three to nothing here on a very um, solid drive to start their first possession of the ball game. 839 left to play here in the first. Three to nothing. Angelo with the early lead. Yeah, who needs the, the, needs the running game, right, Bryce? Yeah, it's the running game that they kind of settled in at the back end of the drive, but the pass was what was working so well for him. It was just three rushing yards right now for Angelo State, but 40 passing yards. 44 yard uh, field goal. Good for Asa Fuller, so it's got to be good, uh, feel good for him and for that special teams group. And so they take that three nothing lead early in the game. And the Buffalo's offense, again, first time they had it, they were not on the field long at all. Now, that's the bad thing. They got off to a great run, and then, unfortunately, they were uh, stymied trying to throw a couple of passes. Kickoff, again, goes over the head of Heston Marshall, so looks like tonight, at least right now, he's not going to have much of a chance on the returns. Well, again, teams are already scouting. They already know. Uh, who to kick it away from, who to avoid. And so that's what they're trying to do in this particular case. And so, again, with a big leg kicker like they have, they can just bound it to the end zone. New receiver in here on this second possession. It's Caleb Olison, the freshman out of Fort Worth. Gerber, good protection, throws across the middle, and it is caught, juggled, and then caught by Olison there for a big first down for the Buffaloes all the way into Ram territory. They mark him down at the 40-yard line, and if you give Nick Gerber enough time, this is the result you see on the replay. He sets great protection. Yeah, plenty of time, and then he was able to get it up the field, and again, caught the receiver in stride. He just bobbled it a bit, but held on to and able to pull it in for the pass reception. Again, Olison, that is his eighth catch this season. He's got one touchdown. Last week, three catches and 24 yards on the road. Khalil Harris runs hard up the middle, kind of sidesteps a defender, and that is a nice seven-yard gain on first down. Yeah, nice open field tackle that time by Trey Darius Colbert. Trey Darius is able to slide over and just swipe at a leg to trip him up. If he had not, then I think that Harris would have still been able to pick up another five or six yards. He had an open lane. So right here as West Texas A&M marching into Ram territory, 7.40 to play first quarter. 
Buffs trail by three. Gerber wants to throw. Nobody's open. Now he's in trouble. And he kind of got sandwiched in between two Ram defenders. And one of them, that had to hurt, was big 55, Jakari McCoy. He's a 310-pound senior out of Dallas. Well, he had Max Perez back there blocking. So, too, was the running back, Harris. But, again, he just didn't see anything open to throw. So he decided to tuck and run. A nice reaction by the front three for Angelo State. So key third down here for West Texas A&M. So far, 0 of 1 on third down. Keneath Red Jr., he's in the game. They're going to give it to him on a jet sweep, and he stays on his feet, avoids the first defender, but then is bottled up. McCoy ends up getting credited for the tackle, but I think it was number 28, Josh Quinton, that came up from the linebacker spot and just blew that play up from the start. Yeah, he really did. He, he read it perfectly, and so he fought off the block, so he stopped the running lane. There wasn't any place to go for the Buffaloes and Kenneth Red Jr. Tried to reverse field, but by then he had already been tripped up. So it's fourth down and long now after the loss, and Gerber backs up. He can kick it, and that's exactly what they'll do is a quick kick. We've seen him do this before. And this one hits at the 20-yard line, rolls inside, and will be down to around the 18-yard line. So again, Buffs, this time they move the ball a little bit, Bryce, but same result, end up having Well, the they punt. got the great pass play completion, and so, but then after that, it just they just couldn't get it going. We'll step aside for a timeout. Back with more from Buffalo Stadium. It's homecoming for West Texas A&M as they out. take on Angelo State. We're back right after this. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. Well, welcome back. You can see the Buffaloes. Everybody's standing around there getting some last-minute encouragement from the coaching staff. And again, here in the first quarter three to nothing with 6 12 left to play in the first quarter homecoming great crowd on hand i mean fantastic crowd here at buffalo stadium for the homecoming a lot of festivities we got a chance to uh, see the homecoming parade obviously they went right here in front of the stadium early today and then of course there was the tailgate area that was full a lot of fans stayed after the homecoming parade and went to the tailgate area and so trying to get this Buffalo team revved up for this one tonight. And so, obviously, from a fan perspective, it's great to see the bleachers fairly full. And now we just need to see the proof on the field. Okay, so Angelo State got a field goal on its first possession. They're going to go with Amayabu. He's running to the outside, got some speed to go along with that power. And that's a nice big run on the first down, carries it all the way up to the 36-yard line. So they took a receiver on the far side of the field. He took off and went flying up the field and, and uh, staying with him step for step was Tobias Harris. That opened up a whole running lay for Mokbu to get off on the right side and get to the outside and pick up that first down. Gain of 19 yards for Amayabu. Again, the second leading rusher in the conference. This time, C.J. Odom gets the carry. As you can see why their running game is so solid. Again, go off the right side that time, and then a big opening for him to run through. And, and Bryce, it, the ball may have popped loose, but it was recovered by Angelo State. Just at the last second, it came free, and Odom was able to recover it. Yeah, take take your pick here. I mean, yeah. Amayabu, 240 pounds, but he's got some speed. Odom, 227 pounds and a little shifty. Alfred Greer, kind of the gadget at 5'6", 180 pounds, and can catch the ball as well. And then we haven't seen Case and Phillips yet, but he's a freshman from Stephenville that has some wiggle. This is Odom. Oh, nice <laughs> tackle. That's Tobias coming up to take out his legs and trip him up. And the, so the actually JT Cavender looks like he's the uh, rodeo guy <laughs> yeah. there, right? Yeah, able to slide down the line and make the stop, and that was a yard loss on that one. So. Good open field tackle for the Buffs. Here's a look at that replay. 
Tobias goes low. Right there, it just takes out his legs, yeah. So it's third down again. This is where Angelo State has been so good in this first quarter. 4.35 to play. Rams lead by a field goal. Good cut and a good run for a first down. Angelo State on the carry by Amayabu. That's Amayabu exactly just, he, back. he just picked his lane that time. And so he again goes to the right. They like going to the right side. And again, we already talked about the reason why with Willis Patrick at 300. 47 pounds out there at the right tackle. They like to go to the right side, and then you just pick a lane and just kind of – you only needed three, so he just squirts through and picks up the first down. Rams send the running back in motion out of the backfield. Bronkhorst wants to throw. Xavier Rivera chasing the quarterback, nearly a block in the back, but the Rams laid off of that one. And so it's an incomplete pass, but anytime you can get Bronkhorst scrambling and kind of on the move – well, again, Willis Patrick was the guy trying to block. They rolled back to the right side, and one of the buffs was able to get beyond him, and they, the fans were hoping for a holding penalty on that play because he was trying to grab a little, not, not didn't grab his jersey, but he was just trying to slow him up enough so he couldn't make the stop. Second down and long. Two receivers split to the near side. They're going to throw to the far side, though, and Pichot nearly escapes from Harris, shows you how quick he is. But Tobias hangs on, makes a stop, and it'll set up another third and short for Angelo State. Well, again, they, Angelo remembers coming up here last year and that tough loss in game two of the two game set. And so they're trying to establish themselves offensively. They've done a good job here so far in the first half. Or the first quarter, I should say, 334. We haven't even played the second quarter. We're still in the first quarter. On third down, hit as he throws, and it affected the throw off the mark, incomplete, and that's J.T. Cavender again in the face of Bronkhorst, and that will force a punt. Delay blitz that time by J.T., and so he waits a half second and then has an open lane, takes off and comes in and is able to get to the quarterback, force the pass probably earlier than what he wanted to do, and that sends it for a fourth down and forces a punting situation for Angelo State. He'll send Tobias Harris back to return the punt. Well, last year we, we said this, Bryce, knowing that Hayden Dennis was going to graduate, talented linebacker for so many years. He said, who's going to replace him? J.T. Cavender yeah. has been that guy. He reminds you so much of Hayden Dennis. And the That's punt was blocked. blocked. It was blocked. It's up in the air. It can be returned. Bogardis is running at the 20, 15. He's going to score. Stampede, baby. Looking for a flag. The Guys running along with him were able to get in front and throw a block. And so, again, I didn't see who got in. We'll have to wait for the replay to see who got in and got their hand on that one. But, boy, what a great block. But Gardas keeps his eye on it because it was high in the air like a punch. He could have called fair catch, right? And so, as we see here coming it's Eric, in. It's Eric Goodman. It's number 51, a true freshman from College Station. And then Bogardis just gets it. Watch them get in front of the punter. Well, there may be a little push in the back. We, we I didn't, didn't see, see anything. I didn't Bryce. see that either. And so, nevertheless, Jerry Compton was trying to get in front. Never, and we'll go ahead and take the touchdown. All right. So, here comes the extra point try for the Buffs. And Gage Rice's kick is through the uprights. Special teams coming through in a big way. And WT scores the first touchdown, takes the lead 7-3. 3-13 left to play in the first quarter. We're back with more football right after these messages. Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium. And again, you see the coaches across the way talking about the thing that's been a problem has been blocked punts, blocked field goal attempts. And so that has come back to haunt him in this one early. And again, big, big uh, add of boys to Eric Gordon who comes in, uh, comes in and makes the block. And then Noah Bogart is able to zero in on it, returns it for the score. 
And the Buffaloes on the scoreboard lead seven to three. So Mauricio Gonzalez will kick off for West Texas A&M. Angles it to the far side. And it's going to be Pitts that returns, slips as he crosses the 10-yard line. A penalty marker flies in. This will be interesting to see what this is. The return man just slipped right as he went past the 10-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see where he threw the flag. Is too, it a late that's hit, where the Bryce? blocking was. And it may have been on the Buffaloes on one of the up men that they were trying to block. Let's see as the officials talk this one over. Trying to see they're looking over the WT sideline and what they want to do. During the return, holding, holding. number 54. So it was a holding Had penalty against Angelo the State. The where they threw the flag, it didn't look like that was the case. And so, and I, again, love Jerry Compton, love his dad and everything about him. He was kind of the one mixed up in that block. And so, again, I thought maybe they were looking at him and instead it was a block in the back. And so... They'll go half the distance to the goal and put Angelo State with the goal post as a reflection right behind them. You know, the, so the defense comes right back on the field, Bryce, but they have some extra momentum, yeah, right? absolutely. First and 10 for Angelo State inside the five-yard line. Handoff goes up the middle, not much running room. Yeah, that was a nice job. They tried to go up the middle that time behind the center and right guard. That was Xavier Rivera on the tackle. And Buff slide down there, and Xavier is there to gum up the hole and not allow the running back to get through. And so nicely done by the Buffaloes. Carl Oldham was who the running back was trying to get through, and he was stopped for no gain. So stay in that same offensive set. Now they shift the running back over. On second down and long, Broncos wants to throw a pump fake. Now he's airing it down the sideline, has a man and overshoots the intended receiver. Some speed out on the outside. Yeah, that again. With Rams, was that was number 80, Kel Williams. Tobias Harris was staying with him step for step, and so it's a timing pattern. They were just trying to get it along the far sideline. Number four. Buffs were offside. Oh. That, that penalty marker was thrown. Second down. Over in the direction, Hunter Hughes. Furious. That's two offsides penalties tonight on the buffs. Right now, looking at Coach Hughes' body language, he doesn't feel like maybe WT did jump offsides. And again, when you have the quarterback in the end zone making that pass, if it been against them, that would have been a safety. So it's now second down and four for Angelo State. Odom gets the carry. Look at that big hole open up, and it's closed quickly. Still going to be a good game, but there's Chris Thomas again. Braxton Webb was the lead blocker, the left tackle that time, and they were trying to run behind him. Odom was spying all the way, waiting for his tackle to get out there, and then he was going to try to jet to the outside, but the Buffs did a nice job. Chris Thomas in particular coming up and making the stop. Again, Chris, he's missed the last two games on the season, nine tackles and a sack, and he is making up for lost time right now. Is there a flag on the play? Because they didn't mark the ball, and we're the yard marker has moved back. Oh, there is a flag out here at the 40-yard line, way down the field. During the play, personal foul, face mask, offense, number zero. That's a distance to go, second down. A face mask goes against the wide receiver for so, Angelo State. So that's a receiver up the field blocking, and so in doing so, he was looking to try to spring, help the running backs get spring, uh, sprung free, and in doing so, his hands came up, connected on the face mask, and that's where that penalty came about. That was Rasheen Green, guilty of that penalty. So these two teams going back and forth here, and we're looking at second down and long again for Angelo State. Broncos throws. And again, sails this pass. Dunham, the intended receiver. So Bryce Bronkhorst, he's definitely the guy. He's their starting quarterback, right? But has missed the last three games. Maybe a little rusty right now. Yeah, and I think the timing is what they're trying to take a look at is, is can he get in sync with his receivers? And again, he had his tight end. He was going up on, on the far sideline, on the far hash mark. He's trying to get up the field. It just overshot it. Third down to the Buffs defense. Get another stop here. Or does Angelo State have a trick up its sleeve? They roll the running back out, dump it 
to Odom, and Odom is taken down, hit hard by two buffs, Chris Thomas first, and then Satchel Escalante. That's the kind of hitting that Coach Hughes has wanted to see, Bryce. Well, and again, you get Chris Thomas back. We've talked about him in the pregame today, and again, makes a big difference. He is an emotional leader out on the field, and you can see when he came across as he read this one all the way and slides down and makes the stop, gets up, kind of flexes a bit because he's excited on the stop. Well, it's exactly how you play that linebacker spot. You fly to the football, take a good angle. That's exactly what Chris Thomas did there. Tobias Harris back to return this punt. The last punt was blocked. This one's short. Tobias will come up and field it right at midfield. Not going to get much, and a penalty marker, a quick one comes in. That could be against the Buffs. Yeah, and that usually is a block in the back, and so that'll mark the Buffs were in Angelo territory, and most likely they'll get moved back into WT territory. But still, great field position for the Buffs here with 112 left to play in the first quarter. So you'll see West Texas A&M offensively get the ball. Right now, the yardage... Doesn't look great for WT. They have the lead, 7-3. to three. Total yards, Angelo State with 82. Most of that was on their first drive. Buffs just 38 yards of total offense with 32 of those coming through the air. Yeah, and that was a great pass completion. The last series, the Buffalo offense was out there. Again, it's been a while since they've been out there because we had the block punt, and then the defense had to go back out there and play once again. This is a long conversation. Well, there's been lots of flags thrown, yeah. and it seems like it's taken a while to, to make the call. Here from Joel, Joel Williams, the head referee. He took that one back in his pocket. During the return, During the return block, in the block in the back, get the kicking team. Ten yard penalty, penalty. First, down. first down. Oh, you don't see that very often, and so I guess that's <laughs> why the discussion <laughs> was so long. Well, and Coach Gersh, that's why, look at him, he's saying, hold on, block in the back against uh, WT, team. right? So they need to mark the penalty off. They haven't done that as of yet. Everyone's confused. Maroon Platoon is yelling, you can't do that. I don't know if that's intended that's for Angelo correct. State or for the officials. The against the return team. Ten yards. <laughs> you down. can't call that, right? Oh, my land. So they, they correct it. There you go. Everybody makes mistakes. That's all right. So it goes back into <laughs> WT territory at the 45-yard line. And so as I think that was maybe why the discussion was so long. They're trying to determine which team they wanted to call it on. Let's see if the offense can get going here once again. We need to see them kind of pick up the tempo a little bit. Yeah, consistency, that is the word that Coach Hughes has said so many times this year with the offense. Throw to the outside. Bogardis goes up top and makes a nice grab. For a that, gain of about eight yards. And that's a pressure grab because he knew he was going to get hit. He did get hit as soon as he pulled that reception in, got his legs taken out from under him, able to hold on for a nice seven-yard gain. Regardless, his second grab in this first half, nearing the end of the first quarter, just 45 seconds left. Here comes a blitz from Angelo State. Buffs pick it up. Gerber will throw it across the middle and... Overshoots Olison. Had the right target that time. Just tried to lead him too much. And so Olison not able to catch up the football. And so had the right idea. But again, as you talked about, pressure was coming up the middle. That does kind of uh, sway your view there a little bit as you're trying to throw over the middle. Third down and short here for West Texas A&M. Need to get to the 45-yard line. Rams show pressure again. And now Gerber turns. And the Buffs will... Maybe change up the play. I didn't see anybody signal anything different from the near sideline. So I, I, they do sh shift the running back from the left side to the right. It's going to be a pass play. Gerber in trouble and finds a receiver for a first down. And that was Jeremy Carnbay that makes the grab. And what a play from the magician, Nick Gerber. Well, absolutely, because they came with the blitz. They came with two linebackers coming up that time, and so they broke free. Nick had to reverse his pattern, as you can see here, and then finds Quarmbe, who goes up and does what he does well. He takes those high passes and pulls them in. I'm going to tell you who that throw in that play right there reminded me of a little bit is Brett Favre. Yeah, and, and that is a Brett Favre move. Again, as we come to the end of the quarter, or coming to the end of the quarter, it's just rolling out. You see the pressure, you roll away from it, and then you're able to make the pass completion. All right, so a good start for WT. They lead 7-3 as we head to second quarter action after this timeout. And uh, so we'll be back with more football 
Media after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10-2. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guides you every step of the way. That is the JFerg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call JFerg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are JFerg Roofing. We are more. All right, we're going to go down to Kent Johnson on the sideline. Kent, take it away. All right, we'll try to get uh, the audio going for uh, Kent Johnson. He's got special guest that he's going to interview in just a second. Second quarter action here, 14-50. Homecoming 2021. There's Kent. <laughs> Homecoming 2021 and one of the uh, honored groups that's with us, the 1986 championship football team of which we're joined now by one key member, Todd Littlejohn, All-America defensive back. Since graduating from WT, his resume reads like a where's where of coaching. Cal, UCLA, San Jose State, Syracuse, Prairie View. He's now the head coach at Bakersfield College in California, which is where he got his start. But tell us what brought you to WT. Opportunity, to be honest with you. Opportunity to be a part of, at that time, just a winning culture, winning tradition, uh, which obviously we were able to set. and. The memories, the friendships are unbelievable, unbelievable. Now you mentioned memories and friendships, your team today, a lot of laughs, a lot of good times, a lot of uh, jokes told about head coach Bill Kelly. Oh, there's no question about that. It's uh, thankful that we can all be back together, um, relive a lot of that, and, and really to where we are now. You know, we attribute a lot to Coach Kelly and everything that he put us through the hard work the mental toughness um and it's is i tell you so so fun to be a part of it now once a buff always a buff it's been over 30 years since you were on campus today you return to see these athletic facilities what what goes through your mind impressive absolutely impressive i'm so blown away by everything and and it i tell you they did it right absolutely and before the game you and your teammates got to take the field in front of this homecoming crowd unbelievable i mean the energy the excitement it's it's crazy i love it absolutely love okay. it well welcome back you know you are always welcome here that's todd little john let's get back to the action all right kid thanks while we were away hey, home, obviously homecoming, a nice right? drive by the buffaloes and they are coming up on a third down and three They've got to get to the, what is it? They've got to get to the seven-yard line yeah. for a first down. Well, Bryce, I see number 16 on the field. That's Jordan Johnson, right? Let's see if we can get him involved on third and short. Angela State bringing pressure. Jordan Johnson takes it, dives forward, and has enough for the first down as he gains yardage to the five-yard line. We, we talked to Jordan uh, earlier this week, and Bryce, he, he felt like, Hey, I'm ready. I feel like I'm in better shape. Hopefully get more opportunities tonight. Yeah, and they keep him out there as well. And so picks up the first down, out first and goal to go. Okay. Johnson takes the carry, takes Angelo State defenders with him to the one-yard line. Why do we love Jordan Johnson? Because he got stopped at three, keeps churning his legs, and gets it up to the one. Second down and goal for the Buffs. They work quickly. 
Johnson takes it again. The ball's fumbled. It's loose, and I think, I think Gerber, Gerber got it. Yeah. And give Gerber credit, Bryce, to number 90, Leighton English, 277-pound uh, sophomore, came up and put a helmet right on the football. Well, and that's one of those two where Jordan went to the right side two times in a row. The third time is what kind of tripped him up as he, as you can see, well, Oof. right there it happened where Nick was able to fall on it. But it does make a third and goal, and it moves them back to the seven-yard line. So now you see different personnel come in. Three receivers on the bottom of your screen there. Bogardis to split out on the far side and on the right side of the field. It's Markel Stevens Peppers. Pressure again from Angelo State. Gerber delivers to Bogardis. Touchdown, Buffaloes. So both touchdowns tonight scored by Noah Bogardis. The first one off of a block punt. This one, more traditional for the wide receiver. The transfer out of Azusa Pacific runs the slant. Perfect throw from Nick Gerber, and the Buffs are an extra point away from leading this game 14-3. to Again, nice drive by the Buffaloes, a nice mix of the run and the pass. That's a 12-play, 55-yard drive, and it's capped off by the catch by Bogardis going from seven yards out into the end zone. So here's Gage Urias. Snap was off, but Brandon Blair does a good job of getting that hold down. Urias stays perfect on the season, 25 of 25 on his extra points. And WT surprising Angelo State right now. They lead 14 to 3 in the second quarter. We'll step aside, come back with more football after this timeout. We are Carpet Tech, and we are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrinking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium again. A nice 12-play drive by the Buffs. They take 4.56 off the clock. And while that was going on, we got a nice interview with former WT Buffalo from the 86 squad. Little, Little John. John, yeah. And uh, maybe we need to do that more often. That was, was <laughs> nice good control, luck charm. Nice controlled drive by the Buffaloes. And so they go up 14-3 over Angelo State. Yeah, right now the, the Rams just have not been in sync offensively, something that they definitely were last week when they scored 62 points. Fair catch made on the and, kickoff. So and the, it goes back to the question we talked about before uh, this ball game got underway. Your quarterback comes back. You got Zach Brockhorst coming out. Hagen Garvin did a great job filling in and got more and more comfortable. And so that's a tough call for a head coach. Obviously, when your starter comes back, he's been around, he's a junior, he's been around for a long time, and so you're comfortable with him, but it looks like he's still trying to find a bit of rhythm here in the ball game today. Well, and you mentioned Hagen Garvin. Bryce, he was Lone Star Conference Offensive Player yeah. of the Week for yeah. what he did against Western New Mexico last week. 11 of 16, four touchdowns through the air, nearly 300 yards, but this is a running play. Amayabu runs and is pummeled. Eric Collins stops him in his tracks and that is a good old-fashioned form tackle. So Eric Collins walks up to the line. He's been doing that a lot of the game, and he has the last several weeks too. So he just slides down the line, sees where the running back is, and as you said, made a nice form tackle. Yeah. 240 pounds of Mayabu. Eric Collins just 200 pounds, but it's all about the form and the finish from Eric Collins, the senior from Cedar Hill who has started since his freshman season here at West Texas A&M. Bronkhorst down the middle, pass caught. That's a first down Rams. And that was Rasheen Green that got free across the middle, the redshirt freshman from Katy. Well, and again, their receivers are doing a nice job. Buffs are playing more of a zone, so they're going to a spot, an open spot in the zone, and are able to come up with those pass completions. That was a big one for Angelo State. Gives them some breathing room. as it's first and 10 for the Rams from their own 39-yard line. Go back to the running game, and again, just not much there. Taylor Hickerson finishes up that play. 
and since he's come on, really, Taylor's done a nice job of really reading running lanes. He'll slide down again on the outside, slides down the line, and then is able to make the stop from behind. That was Alfred Greer on the carry. He comes out, Amayabu checks back in, and it's second down and eight for Angelo State. Rams are just 35 rushing yards so far in the half. Bronkhorst all day to throw. Now he's going to scramble outside, take it and run in a late penalty. That's interesting. Now, it's good for WT. I think that's going to be a hold. It could Richard. be holding because the, one of the men that was, was trying to get to the outside looked like he may have been grabbed a little bit. If you're Angelo State, Holy you're saying, why did it take so long to throw that? Well, and again, the clocks are going. The linemen's head to. They know the quarterback only has so much time, and so they can only sustain those blocks for so long. And then when it takes a little longer, that's when the holdings right usually occur. Braxton Webb, the hometown product, senior from San Angelo. And also good, good job by uh, the WT secondary in terms of coverage on that right. play. Right. Yeah, that was the secondary stop that time. Safety's in right now. Escalante and Gage Smith. Bronkhorst will throw again. Receivers open at the 35. Good move by Rasheen Green. And then he's cut down. Good tackle and open field from JT Cavender. Cavender did a nice job that time because he really was kind of playing a zone. And so he sees the receiver in front of him. And then he just goes as quickly as he can and wraps him up, grabs the feet, trips him up. Cavender with his fourth tackle in the half. Third down and long. Bronkhorst. It's a screen pass. And Eric Collins comes in, sheds the blocker, and really disrupts that play. Eric Goodman comes in and uh, cleans up. But give credit to Collins on that play. That's the youngster, Jacob Long, with a big body who was out there trying to block the smaller Eric Collins. And he just kind of blows him up, gets around him, and is able to make the open field stop and make it fourth and ten. Again, Buffs playing. We talked where they needed to play with emotion. They're playing with emotion. They're flying around. They're tackling well. And this is Jekyll and Hyde, right, Bryce? Yes. I mean, this season with yes. West Texas A&M. Yes. And this is really what uh, Coach Hughes has expected every week from his team. Get a good punt rush again. A penalty marker flies. Tobias Harris fields it from the 20-yard line, makes the first man miss, gets to the outside, and then is ushered out of bounds. Special teams play made by number 39 for Angelo State, Eric Rasco. Well, but what is this penalty? What this penalty is. And where it's thrown, it makes it look like one of the coverage guys on the outside maybe went out of bounds and stayed out of bounds too long. Let's see how the officials sort this one out. It's a, it is a procedure penalty called against Angelo. And so are they just going to attack it on the on the end. Legal formation. <laughs> I'm watching Hunter Hughes. Yeah, I thought there was something that he wanted to convey to a coaching staff. Or instead. that somebody was in trouble, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. That's really what I thought. And instead, he came flying over and is high-fiving everybody. Lots of energy. All right, we're going to take a timeout here, the media timeout. West Texas A&M leading 14 to 3, playing outstanding football right now in the first half. We're back with more football on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10 too. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating 90 years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Welcome back to Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. WT leading 14-3 to here in the second quarter. And right now I want to bring your attention uh, to the camera shot that we've got right there and uh, talk about a uh, sad situation, but something we want to mention is being honored tonight, a uh, student that passed away uh, earlier this month, Bailey Chisholm, a freshman nursing major 
from Border, Texas, just 18 years old in a tragic accident on October 1st. Uh, Bailey was a part of the Maroon Platoon, and so you see there, Bryce, they're honoring her tonight uh, with the uh, shaker that they've got there yeah, nice. and uh, some roses. And so they had that moment of silence before the game. Prayers and thoughts definitely with her family. Yeah, absolutely. And again, appreciate so much what all the Maroon Platoon does. And even tonight, taking this moment to be able to uh, honor one of their own, uh, as you talked about, who had a tragic accident. The score right now, 14-3. This is Brandon Blair that takes the run and gains just a yard over the left side. Blair, one of our favorite players, a tough guy, special teams guy, starting out the first couple years and then has really developed into a, a good hand from the running back spot. He's had some fumbling issues this year. And running both running backs, or I should say both running backs are out there. Blair and Harris are both out there. And so a different look for WT. Blair goes in motion, and Gerber wants to throw. Brandon Blair tried to make the catch. A lot of contact on the outside, tight coverage down the field from Angelo State, who's a linebacker and, in coverage against Blair. And the fans would love a flag on that one, but credit the secondary as that guy got his head around and was looking back for the football. That's why no flag was thrown. They were step for step, good defense that time. And again, it could have been one of those where maybe you were trying for the home run, maybe go for the double. Instead, hit Brandon a little quicker. The on small the ball, right? Yeah, yeah. A little baseball. That's easy to criticize from up here. But Terminology that's what, that's thrown looked, in as it's October, it Bryce. Is. We got the playoffs going. <laughs> Who's your pick, Bryce? Who do you got? I, I, I tell you what, I know people don't like, but Houston looks really good. Okay. And so I'm going to kind of go with Houston. Chris Jaquist likes that uh, Astros call there. <laughs> Gerber will throw, and there's Noah Begardis again, but he loses the football, so they're going to call incomplete pass. Well, I, that was in. A trio of oh. defenders, and it was spot on. It hit Noah in the hands, but then just as soon as he got there, he got tripped up, and so the ball springs free. And so Hunter goes out, appreciate the effort uh, for his wide receiver, but it's all for naught. Regardless, the leading receiver, obviously a touchdown catch, and also he scored the touchdown on the long return after the Buffs blocked a punt. Right now it's fourth down, and so Aaron Koash will punt it back to the Rams. Good defensive stand by Angelo State. This is a good punt. It's going to go over the head of the punt return wow. man into the end zone. So it's good to see number 25 yes. back. Yes. And obviously that one goes into the end zone. He'd like to angle that one and, and maybe get it out of bounds. But nonetheless, there's been some punting woes this season for WT. Yeah, there really has. And it's good to see him back out there just from the standpoint that he brings a lot of continuity, and so that's always a big plus for the Buffalo. All right, we'll step aside, take a timeout. West Texas A&M leading this one 14-3 as the second quarter winding down. We're back with more football for Buffalo Stadium right after this. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. Welcome back to Buffalo Stadium. Buffs lead this one. 7.42 left to play here in the first half. They're up 14-3 to three on a couple of Noah Bogardis touchdowns. One of those is was a block punt, and he was able to recover it and take it in on special teams, and the other came on a nice pass completion into the end zone. And so the Buffs do a nice job to take this early 14-3 to three lead on the well, heavily favored Angelo State Rams in this one. And, and you know, Bryce WT, two and three record. There was a sense of disappointment, obviously, after last Saturday. But Coach Hughes, in talking to him Thursday night, he said, you know what? We're right in the mix in terms of the Lone Star Conference. Right. And, and he's exact. He's exactly right because Midwestern State's at the top, obviously, 3-0, and UTPB 2-0. And, and then there's one, two, three, four teams, four teams at 1-1. One one. One. Yeah. Angelo and WT are two of those four teams. And so, yeah, they're all right there. And so, again, this is why this game is so important this evening. 
6.49 to play for halftime. And on first down, Odom gets the carry. <laughs> and for some reason, Angelo State forgot to block number 31, Chris Thomas. He dumps the running back for a big loss of three that time. And I think he was surprised because nobody was on him. And so he just sprinted to the running back and threw him for a loss and a great tackle that time by number 31. We're, glad, we're so glad to see Chris Thomas back here this evening. Well, C.J. Odom has got to be thinking, guys, come on. you got to pick up that linebacker screaming down uh, downhill. A loss of six, third and 16. Second 16. Throw down the sideline. Intercepted. They're going to throw a flag. This could be coming back. It's Kanate that returns it to the 30-yard line, but this could be defensive pass interference. And it is going to be because Kanate extended his hands when he was trying to come back to the football. And so he saw that it was going to be short, as you can see right here on the replay. Again, he's step for step, but sees it's going to be short, so he kind of pushes a little bit, but he's trying to stop himself to grab it and turn around and go back. And the officials are not going to say, unfortunately, that he was going for the ball. That, Instead, they're calling a pass in the That's tight. That's calling it pretty yeah. tight right there. Yeah. And so that was a great play. And again, it was one of those where he was trying to stop himself, but he extended his hands. Yeah. Credit the receiver. He did the right thing. He fell down out of bounds and drew the flag. Well, and Hunter Hughes is okay because it's a hustle mistake by uh, Kanate, and he's just glad to see Ibrahim catch that ball. He missed a couple of interceptions that went through his hands last week. Here's a sack for West Texas A&M as shooting through defensively Michael Smith. Well, I'll tell you what, we were talking about those young freshmen in the pregame. Michael Smith does a nice job, fights, goes to the left, fights off the block, and then cuts back to the inside and is able to make the stop. Just watch as he steps to the outside, and then comes back in and makes the step, the stop or a loss. You know, obviously Chris Thomas back and did not play last Saturday, but Bryce, this looks like a brand new defense. Yeah, it's totally different looking. Second down and long. Bronkhorst hit as he throws. Beautiful play. First down to Dagan Dunham. And give credit to Bronkhorst. He got hit hard, but stood in and delivered that pass right where it needed to be. Well, Thomas was one of those that came in. There were two buffs that converged on the quarterback, and he knew he was going to get hit. He just stood as long as he could release the ball, and then, as you mentioned, got it to his tight end for the reception and the first down. Big play there for Bronkhorst. Ball may have been tipped and then incomplete through the hands of Rasheen Green. And so it stops the clock with 4.53 to play in the half. These two teams, what they have done offensively for uh, Angelo State, 231 rushing yards a game, 32 points a game. A lot, of, a lot of points, obviously, last week. Buffs offensively, 25th in the nation in total offense, 16th in scoring. It's 14-3 to in 105 yards for Angelo State, just 93 for WT. Right. The defenses have been more prevalent here. This is a run to the right side for Angelo State. It was Greer. Actually, a Mayabu that took the carry there. There's a penalty marker in the well, back. He had such a big opening, it looked like there was a holding penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Holding offense, number 77. Ten yard penalty, second down. So they call holding against the Rams. That was Omayabu on the carry. He's he's 23, Greer's 22. They got those numbers scrunched up, and so. So Jacob Long is the guy they call the hold on, and so he's the right guard, and so he pulls, tries to come out and set a block, but the guy he was trying to block was trying to get to the outside, so he had to grab some jersey in order to prevent him from doing that, and that's where the holding penalty came. So it backs the Rams up. Bronkhorst fires again, pass complete on the outside, a good run after the catch. On the outside for the Rams. That was Pichot. Eric Collins slides down the line, and he's able to push him out of bounds. And again, that just shows him shows his versatility as he is playing inside, and then he'll move to the outside and play against the receiver. And right now, the buff secondary playing, as you've said, Bryce, 7 to 10 yards off, respecting the speed of Angelo State. Yes. So Broncos just picking him apart. Yeah, he, he only... In this particular case, they, he only has to throw it to the marker. 
third down and seven to throw and the receiver slipped or that would have been probably a first down. And really all he needed to do was to have the receiver just turn around at the marker where he was at. They gave him such a cushion he would have had a first down. But instead he cut to the inside and then the pass was to the outside. Again, I think that's where Brockhorse is just still not on the same page with his receivers. That was Kyle Bradford, wide receiver. Quick one, 5'10", 150 pounder from Prosper, Texas. Buffs defense holds and forces another punt here for Angelo State. This is much work really for both sides, punting all season long, which means there's been some great defense. Tobias Harris stands on his own 10 yard line. And an end over and kick that Tobias will let go over his head and into the end zone. So the WT defense holds and Again, an interesting first half. The Rams have not been able to get uh, the points other than just that field goal, WT. Not a lot of yards, but two touchdowns. I've, I've been impressed with the defense tonight. They have really stepped up so much different than how they played against Western Oregon last week. And so, again, they're flying around to the football, putting pressure on the quarterback, and the secondary has stepped up. They're, again, yes, they're giving them a lot of leeway as far as room is concerned, but they're able to converge on the football if a pass is completed. So just 3.52 left before halftime. And Gerber works from the gun. Makes it to Harris, picks up a good block, and then is cut down a short gain for Nick Gerber. It was a good read that time on the RPO. Basically, he fakes the handoff to Harris, and so he's looking to see how's the line breaking. They were breaking to the far side where Harris is running, so he kept it, came to the near side. But a good open field tackle that time. Sliding it was Letty French. Yeah to make the stop. And, and Bryce Letty French, one of my favorite names, the all <laughs> LSC name team, right? Letty French, the safety from Brock, Texas, a senior. It's a secondary, a lot of seniors back there for Angelo State. Harris tries the left side, good tackling again for Angelo State. This time it's Hunter Kyle. And I'll tell you what, he was one step from breaking that one. Hunter did a nice job of coming up, making that tackle because had he not, it looked like there was an open lane for Khalil to run through. Okay, so third down for West Texas A&M. Two of five so far in the half. And really, if nothing else, they need to pick up this third down to just keep the clock running. Yeah, that's the thing you want to do. You want to be able to chew up as much clock as you can. Down to 240 left in the half. The Rams shift up front. Gerber, plenty of time to throw. Bogardus going down the field, and he makes the catch in stride. First down, Buffaloes. Nice catch that time. It was similar to the catch he had in the last series where he fumbled it when he got hit. He was in double, he had double coverage on him, and he was able to split the coverage, get ahead of it, and was able to pull it in as we watch the replay here. And again, you can just see on the right side as he splits the defenders and then able to pull that in. Harris starts right, cuts back left, and is tripped up. That's a great defensive play by the linebacker, Hunter Kyle, loss of one on the run for Harris. Yeah, Harris is upset because he knew he, had, he knows he has the speed, tried to exploit at that time, but just a nice job by the linebacker, Kyle, coming up, able to trip up the shoestring. Clock so continues to run at 150. And they'll be patient. WT still has all three timeouts. Gerber wanted to go right. Now he looks back left. Nobody's open. All day to throw. Now he'll go across the middle. And it was intercepted. There's a penalty marker at the 15-yard line. This is an interception for Angelo State unless that penalty is against the Rams. Great break on the ball by Devin Washington, but what is that marker that sits at the 15-yard line? Well, we'll let the officials sort this one out because usually that would be holding on the Rams, and that's what it is. It is a penalty against the Rams, so big break for the Buffaloes. So they'll bring this one back in the line of scrimmage and mark off the penalty. Great protection by that oh, Buffs offensive protection. line. I mean, that... That's the thing is, again, Holding, oh, they no play well here at home. It's on the road. Defense, number 20, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. So they did call holding in the secondary against Angelo State. They mark it up to the 25 yard line, but it'll be an automatic first down with 134 left to play here in the half. Bus lead at 14 to three. 
Lucas Kinsey, Bryce Sheets, happy to be coming your way tonight on the Lone Star Digital Network and News Channel 10 2. Great crowd on hand for this one this evening. Two receivers to both sides. Jared Compton is the running back. He's a speed back. And he uses some power here, though, and picks up about eight yards there. Nice run from Compton. Compton. Goes off the right side that time, has an opening, and then hits a defender, bounces off of him, turns back to the middle, picks up a couple more extra yards. Tell you what, Jared, 5'10", 185 pounds. He is strong. Rams showing blitz on second down and short. Gerber wants to throw. Now he'll just flip it underhand to Compton. Makes one man miss. Has a first down. It'll be goal to go from the nine yard line. Flag but on the play. <laughs> They're looking over at Angelo because that's probably going to be a holding penalty. Again, it's holding cool. offense number 75. So what, it, so what happened is they split the defenders, and you can watch Adam on the right side away from the play, and he just doesn't release. He has kind of a hook on that one and just doesn't release. West Texas that was on the official the side of the play. Timeout taken here for the Buffaloes. They want to talk things over, leading 14-3, to 3, 56 seconds left before halftime, and we're back right after this quick timeout here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10-2. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. Well, the Buffaloes make their way back out. So, too, the, the Rams from Angelo State with the Buffs leading this one 14 to 3. 56 seconds left to play here in the first half. The Buffs probably within scoring distance as far as a field goal is concerned. Second down and long, though, as they got to get to the 16 yard line. I look at Noah Bogardis. He's on the bottom of your screen, matched up in single coverage. Rams blitz the house. They throw it to Bogardis, and he is hogtied. Great play. The official will stop the forward progress. It's Devin Washington. The clock continues to run. Sure tackle. And Gerber had to get rid of that ball quick. He did. 37 seconds left. Third down and seven. Buffs in the hurry up mode. Gerber going to roll to the right. Eyes downfield and just couldn't get that ball up for the intended target, Reed Jr. And he was there. He came. He did what he should do. He came, came back to his quarterback and was trying to help him out. Yeah. And it was just a bad throw that time from Nick Gerber. They're going to have a conversation as they make it to the near side. Yep. Keneath telling Nick, said, "That's all right, man. Get me next time." Good to see number two back on the field tonight, yes. Keneath Red Jr. Strong receiver. Transfer from Urbana College last year, originally out of Detroit, Michigan. So Urias comes on to attempt the 44 yard field goal from the left hash. And the kick is up, and it is good. Nice. Gage Urias with a big field goal right down the middle, 17 to 3. The Buffs take the two touchdown lead. And let's keep it right here, Bryce. And just uh, 21 seconds left before halftime. That's crucial. That's a big field goal there for Urias. That's it, his long this season. It really is. And again, it was one of those where they had to hurry out and get set up. And so Gage kind of took his time or took as much time as he could getting set and was able to drop that one through with 21 seconds left to play. Gage this season, now six of eight on field goals. And again, that's his new career long 44 yarder. And he has been outstanding this year. Has worked hard in the offseason. The junior from Lubbock, Texas, local product. Played his high school ball at Lubbock Coronado. As did Jared Compton. And so those two players making some plays on that drive. So the Buffs want to squib kick this one and get it up the field. And then let's go to half with a lead. Make sure you get good special teams coverage here. You don't yeah, want to give Angelo State no. any real estate. Exactly. 
as the Rams do still have three timeouts remaining. Mauricio Gonzalez angles it to the near side where Pitts will get it at the five, up to the 10, to the 20, squeezes through, and a good return up near the 30-yard line. And the clock stops with 14 seconds left before halftime. You know, we knew that WT Bryce was was going to come out swinging. They were going to come out. They were going to uh, play hard. What I did not honestly expect was only three points from Angelo State. No, that, that has been a bit of a surprise. But again, go back to what the Buffs have done defensively. They've made some good stops, and especially they've limited what the Rams can do in the run game. They've thrown the ball really well tonight but it's limiting what they can do. They only have 29 net rushing yards. And for a team that's one of the tops in the country at running the football, that's a nice job by the defense. Rams will keep it on the ground. That's Alfred Greer. He's got speed at the 45, makes one man miss, and is tripped up by Chris Thomas. A big run. Angelo State coming in for that timeout with five seconds remaining. John Gersh was doing his own sprint on the far sideline to get to the official to make the timeout call. You know, Alfred Greer last week, an 86-yard touchdown run against Western New Mexico. It just takes a small crease, and he can scoot. Well, again, we saw him last year, and the thing about it is, is once he gets into space, he finds that extra gear. But we call him a bowling ball just because of the way he runs into contact. It kind of bounces off of it and then keeps going. A reminder that after the second quarter action concludes, Kent Johnson will interview head coach Hunter Hughes down on the sideline. We'll have a performance from Sound of West Texas marching band. They'll perform at halftime. And then Bryce, very excited to have one of my favorite coaches here at West <laughs> Texas A&M, the legend Jake Krolick, uh, our cross-country coach, will join you at halftime. You get a chance to talk to Coach Absol Krolick. Absolutely, absolutely. Did you run cross country in Indiana, Bryce? I, I did. I actually ran. Okay. I thought they just played, played, played hoops in uh, Indiana. I ran cross country to get in shape for basketball. Here's so. a, a pass complete on the outside. Catch made by the big target Noah Massey. I think it was 1.4 seconds on the clock. And so what that allows them to do is do a Hail Mary. They'll send a bunch of receivers in. Bryce, they're sending the kicking team on. you got to be kidding me. Well, we know he has a big leg. That's one thing for sure. I'd still leave somebody back just in case. Because the holder is the back of this, the quarterback. This is a 56-yard try. Which... Play clock's running down. If you had Justin Tucker from the Ravens, <laughs> I would say, hey, no problem, right? Timeout, Angelo State, their second of the half. So the Rams want to take a timeout, and now does, if you're Coach Gersh, what do you do? You try a 56-yarder, could get blocked potentially, or do you let Bronkhorst, who has an arm, heave one to the end zone? Well, and again, now they can talk this one over because they were running out of time. That's why they sent the field goal unit out there. And he's staying out there, so he's not going to let it bother him. He's going to get his measurement, get his distance. And again, we saw him in warm-ups. He has a big leg, and so... And he's trying to get comfortable with where he needs this one to be. Here's a look at the band. Asa Fuller, the, the kicker, is 0 for 3 on field goals from 40 to 49 yards. He does have a long punt of 78 yards. But he will not be able to punt this one through the uprights. The hold will be from his brother Cade Fuller. Now and the yes, buffs are putting Tobias back deep just in case. Need the good snap and hold, and the head linesman comes in. Hunter Hughes is going to ice the kicker because he has a timeout left. You got any timeouts, Bryce, you want to take <laughs> before halftime? I don't, but again, we got some gamesmanship going on. It shows you how important it is as far as getting points on the board. And Buffs lead it 17 to 3. And Asa Fuller is like, can I please just kick? Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't even left. He hasn't gone to the sideline, he hasn't walked over with anybody in this one. He stayed out there just to stay focused on what his job is here. Great homecoming night here for West Texas A&M. Sideline, players turned around, telling the fans get up, make some noise as they come back out and try this field goal. 
score updates for you, Bryce. In the Lone Star Conference, Texas A&M Commerce falls today in overtime at home against Saginaw Valley State, 20 to 17 in overtime. And that's the only score we have right now. Of course, a non-conference game there for the Lions. This crowd getting loud here on the 56-yard field goal try for Asa Fuller. Snap was good. Fuller with the kick, and he pushed it no good to the left. And that will end the first half with the Buffs leading 17-3 over Angelo State. Again, we'll stay right here. We'll let Kent Johnson get set up. And I think Hunter Hughes may be a little fired up here for this he, halftime he interview. He probably will because, again, we saw him run over to the sideline, or over on the near sideline. We thought he was going to talk to somebody. Instead, he was talking to his special teams of defense and high-fiving everybody. Again, Buffs leading by two touchdowns. Had a special teams touchdown, and they had a throw and catch from Nick Gerber to Noah Bogardis. Let's hear from head coach Hunter Hughes. Down here with head coach Hunter Hughes, and in the first half, your Buffaloes have given this homecoming crowd quite a bit to cheer about. Well, it, it, I think we're playing really well. Uh, I think our defense has come out and made tackles. Haven't had those same mistakes we've had. Um, but you know what? We're in this situation two weeks ago. They get the ball coming out of the half, and uh, you know we got to shut down, continue this momentum, and hopefully this crowd will keep going and, and uh, keep us up. Been a lot going on today, a lot of fun, but uh, keeping the focus is paramount. Well, yeah, and, and you know our guys know what's in front of them, and uh, they got 30 minutes to keep playing their ass off and keep going, and uh, we'll see what happens in 30 minutes. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. Head Coach Hunter Hughes, let's go upstairs for our halftime activities. Lucas, Bryce. All right, thanks very much, Ken. We appreciate it. 17 to three, the Buffaloes with the lead as we head into the halftime, and again, a nice homecoming crowd enjoying the first half of this one. We'll take a timeout, and we'll be back right after this. WT student athletes drink low fat chocolate milk post workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low fat chocolate milk to your post workout routine. Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guide you every step of the way. That is the J. Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards, we have it all. Call J. Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are J. Ferg Roofing. We are more.
Hughes continues the snippets from Castlevania, Pitfall, and music everyone will recognize as the members of the Southwest Texas play Human Tetris. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your name. And welcome back to halftime festivities here as the WT. Buffaloes have a 17 to 3 lead tonight over Angelo State. And welcome to the Holiday Inn Express and Suites halftime show. Jake Krolik, head cross country coach and assistant track coach, is joining us. And in other words, he likes those distant races that take place. And so, Jake, let's talk a little bit about your club this year. Again, both teams rank, both the men and the women are ranked this year and off to a great start. And I've noticed in a couple of things that we've seen. Uh, so far, you had the um, uh, the Cardinal Cross Country. You had the William Graham Invitational this uh, yesterday, I believe. It came in third in that one. Just kind of recap how this season has gone for your club. So uh, let, let me talk a little bit about my uh, women here. Yeah. Uh, our women are ranked nationally for the first time since 2014. So when I got here, the men were pretty darn good right. they qualified for the nationals four years in a row right. so that was part of the draw to come to wt right. but uh i i took it as a personal challenge to have a have a strong women's program right. so right. it's taken a few years to get it rolling but uh our women are ranked finally and uh, uh definitely deservingly our, I, I think that uh we didn't have a great showing at the louisville classic of the cardinal classic but they are much better than they showed in Louisville. We had our number two girl, Eleanor, drop out. If we would have had her finish where she finished the way she did at Missouri Southern two weeks prior, we would have beat the number 14 team in the nation just with her getting doing what she's capable of doing. So, Talk a little bit about your women's team first. Let's start with them a little bit. Talk about some of the performers you have and how this season has gone for them. So Florence Awajaneza, she was runner-up in the 5,000 meter indoors. So uh, she qualified for the 5,000 and the 10,000 outdoors on the track. And so I really expect her to be a contender for the individual national title during cross-country season this year. And then when we went to Missouri Southern, Eleanor Kurtabi finished within one second of her. So we have, I really believe we have two girls that are very capable of being the national champion when it comes to the individual title. So you have two girls up there bidding for the top spot in the nation. We, we got to have three other girls that are there to do the job. 
I've been watching our team over the last week since we went to Louisville, and I really believe that our girls are starting to learn what it takes to be one of the top teams in the nation. They're learning to work together, and I am really enthused by what I've seen over the past seven days since we got back from Louisville. The interesting thing about, as opposed to track, where it is more of an individualistic performance, in cross country it's definitely a team performance, and so you can have two of the top runners that you may have, but you need those other ones to come up as far as scoring is concerned. Of course, that, that three, four, five is so important. And we, we've had four very good girls when we've went to our last two meets, but we've had one girl just missing, not quite on the mark. And it's kind of kept us from doing what we know we're capable of. So we, we saw some results happen this weekend that we know what we need to do when we go to Lubbock in November for the regional meet. And if we do that, we will qualify for the national meet. And I really believe we have a top 15 team here at uh, WT. And these, these ladies are ready to go out. They're working together as a group. And we're, we're going to have some outstanding performances from this group of women that we haven't seen in six or seven years. Well, you talk about the fact that for the first time they are ranked in the nation. So that speaks a lot to the performers and what they are doing here as they compete on campus. Talk a little bit now about your men's team, and you've got some veteran guys that make a big difference. And the interesting thing about the men's squad, too, is with the women's squad as well, but with the men's club, you have performers from all over the world, and then you have some local guys sprinkled in there as well. So, so yes, we have our returning top ever finisher individually, Ezekiel Kipchurcher. And he didn't have a great summer for us, but he set school record in the 5K in the spring. Uh, he's our top finisher from the national meet and ever finished 12th in 2019. So he's from Kenya, yes, all over the world. <laughs> we've got one of our top guys, Harry Lourdor. He's from France. Uh, we've got Innocent Merwana Shaka and Bratari Ruganegua. Both are refugees from the Congo. Batari went to Amarillo High. Right. Innocent came to us from Minnesota. We've got four athletes on our team from the Congo. I don't know if there's any other team in the country that right. has four athletes from Congo. Right. But uh, Innocent uh, almost broke the school record for 8,000 meters, almost broke Ezekiel's course record at Louisville uh, when he ran 23.53 in Louisville. So he, I believe he's a top 15 guy in Division Two. Zeke is getting back in shape. He's going to be right there with Innocent. Uh, Batari, he's focusing on track, getting ready for the 800, hopefully win another national title for us. But you know what? We, we've got a bunch of guys with experience here. We just got to put the pieces together. We haven't done that yet. So hopefully by the time we get two more weeks, we got conference. Four weeks from now, we got the regional championships. We have to be ready to go by November 6th when we compete in Lubbock. We've done it before. I've had teams here that I am not very optimistic about making the national meet, and we've done it. So this team... I, I'm a lot more optimistic about us doing the job and getting to getting out to St. Leo in Florida and being at the national championships. So the Buffaloes lead here at the half, 17 to three over Angelo State. Speaking of Angelo State, you've got the Blue and Glow Classic coming up next week. Tell us a little bit about that. Honestly, you know what? We usually would not be too enthused to go to Angelo <laughs> State. They're, they're, they're not all that enthused about cross country down there. But you know what? I, I love it that they're letting us come down there. We need to get a meet. And my boys haven't done their job this season. Right. So Coach Dibburn's uh, been great to let us come down there and race against them this uh, this fall. So uh, we're, we're going down there to, to get our group together, go and put seven to ten guys together that are going to run eight kilometers together and get that confidence that we need to go and win a nine consecutive Lone Star Conference championship. Build that confidence that's going to help us be a top four, top five team in the South Central region. So this is what we need this is what we need at this point in the season to help us take that next step to do the things that we need to do in November. So as you go through the Blue and Gold Classic you said next week and then what you're really aiming for is the Lone Star Conference championship. Talk about the teams you're going against. Who are you worried about? So on the women's side, the big thing is Dallas Baptist. They're, they're ranked, I think, 18th or 19th in the nation. They have an outstanding program. Coach Phillips does a great job with his ladies. They got a lot of good girls there. They got a team of probably 20 to 25 girls. We got a team of nine girls on our roster. So you know what? We we're, we're, we're maybe have less in numbers, but we have the quality. We just got to know that we can do it. We have to believe. We have to have the confidence that we can go in there and beat a team that beat us 
beat us in Joplin, but I really believe that as we keep developing throughout the season, our women are going to be in contention to win their first Lone Star Conference title since 2014, I believe, or 2013. Right. Uh, so then my boys, we've won eight consecutive Lone Star Conference titles. We take pride in being the premier distance program in the Lone Star Conference pro. Uh, Lone Star Conference. So we, we like to kind of say, hey, this is our opportunity to just remind people, hey, we're the real deal. This is who you want to be. You want to be like West Texas A&M. So we're, we're going to go there, do our job, and have some confidence going into the South Central Region on November 6th. And that's where the next one will be after that. It'll be the South Central Regional on the 6th, and then, of course, the NCAA Championship. If you get that far, that'll be November 20th. And so a lot in the offing for cross-country for West Texas A&M. We've got a lot of work to do. Nothing's going to be given to us. Right. If we want it, we got to go take it. So uh, we got to go out there. we got to do some work over the next month or so. I really believe in this group of young men and young women that we can do what it takes to be in St. Leo come November 20th. And not to... Not to go too far off the reservation a little bit, but Jake Grolick also an uh, experienced runner himself, and again almost on the Olympic team here not too long ago. And I know, and I know that maybe it's a sore point, but I think at the same time you got to look at it that you really know how to motivate these students to come out and perform. I've lived it. I've breathed it. I've, I know what it takes to run at a very high level. The highest level I've ever run at was done here in the Panhandle right. here at West Texas. So when it comes to what do ideal training conditions look like, I've lived it. I've breathed it. I've done it. That's what i got to provide to my athletes over the next month or so. And you know what? I, I hope that they take a little bit from what I've done as a runner myself. But you know what? I know what they need, and uh, they know that I'm working as hard as they are. They know that they can trust me, and I know that uh, that's what's going to help them believe that they're capable of doing what we need to do come uh, November 6th in Lubbock. Head cross country coach Jake Grolick joining us here on the on the halftime show, brought to you by Holiday Inn Express. And again, congratulations on what you've done so far. I know you got big things coming up here over the course of the next several weeks. Appreciate you for having me on here, Bryce. They're very good. Jake Grolick joining us on the uh, Holiday Inn Express halftime show. We'll take a timeout. Buffs lead this one 17 to 3. We're back after this. Eighty years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans, and nearly 300 academic All-Americans. Celebrating nine years of success, this is the Lone Star Conference. Welcome back to the Holiday Inn Halftime Show, Holiday Inn Express Halftime Show. Kent Johnson joins us here now. And, of course, Kent, uh, we talked to head coach Hunter Hughes. Eh, kind of stoic, but yet at the same time kind of happy, so that's not bad. Yeah, I, I, I guess you could <laughs> say he's uh, tempering his enthusiasm because we've been here before yes. more than once. Yes. Uh, Buff's playing well, yes. could play better. We've seen them play a lot worse. They're uh, beating a very good Angelo State team. But as you run through the stats, which we will momentarily, Angelo State wins the stat page. Right. The Buffs are winning the scoreboard. Yeah, and that's where the difference is right now, 17-3, to three, the Buffs. And, again, kind of what Kent's alluding to is that in the Colorado Mines game, when Buffs were ahead at halftime in that one, and he said, I wish we would have scored touchdowns instead of field goals. They led 13 to nothing at that point but then came back, obviously, and won that ball game. And so, again, we know the caliber. This is the number 17 team in the country. And so, we again, playing another ranked team. But, you know, the crowd does make a difference out there it's, tonight. It's an amazing crowd out there tonight, yeah. Bryce, being down on the field. Uh, you know, I'll make a couple observations, and then you can tell me right or wrong. Yeah. Obviously, the, the job that Nick Gerber has done 
leading the offense when he needs to. Some of his passes to Noah Bogardis, if they're anywhere else, yes. they're incomplete or, or intercepted, but he has put them spot on tonight. Good job there, but I really want to pat the defense on the back. Yeah. Going up against an Angelo State team that's averaging, you know, 200 and what was what it, a, 60 yards okay, yeah. per game yeah. on the ground. Yes. They've allowed 52 in the first half. Yeah. yeah, 14 carries for 52 yards. And the Buffs have 17 carries for 51 yards. So they're right there with them uh, so far tonight. Also, total offense for the Buffs they have 28 plays, 145 yards. Angelo, as Ken alluded to, they have 35 plays for 154, but it's the Buffs leading on the scoreboard. And, again, you talked about those passes to Noah Bogardis. Let's go back a little bit. Special teams play got us on the scoreboard. It was a block punt that uh, we'll get to here momentarily, but it was a block punt that Noah Bogardis kept his eye on the football, picks it up, mm -hmm. and then is able to take it in for the score. Yeah, Noah's done more than just offensive yes. play for the Buffs, and, and that was huge because the Buffs had held – I'll use the term held, Angelo State to a field goal yes. on their first drive, but trailed 3-0 early and then pin Angelo State deep, get the blocked punt, that turns into a touchdown, and the Buffs haven't trailed since that point. Yeah, absolutely. And then McGardis also had a touchdown reception in the ball game today from seven yards out and then had another reception that we thought – uh, was a spectacular catch that he ended up fumbling, but it was against three different defenders. And he was able to, as uh, Nick was able, Gerber was able to thread the needle, got it to him, and unfortunately just couldn't hold on to it. But again, just shows kind of the way the Buffs offense have played tonight. And I like what the uh, the linebackers and the defensive line have done, getting pressure on the quarterback. You know, Christopher Thomas has been all over the place. Well, Chris leads and tackles six tonight for the Buffaloes. How great is it to see him back yeah. tonight as he comes out and is back on, the, on there with the defense? Uh, JT Cavender has five tackles. Tobias Harris has five. As far as the individual performances for Khalil Harris, he has five carries for 30 yards. Jared Compton has one for eight. Brandon Blair has three for seven. Nick Gerber is 7-11 for 94 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Zach Brockhorse, 13 of 21, 102, and that's kind of what's been a little different. We didn't expect to see them to throw it as much, but credit the Buffs up front seven, able to stop the run and force them to throw it. And Angelo likes to make the other team throw, and the Buffs have had success through the air. So I think it's key for the Buffs to stop Angelo on this first possession of the second half, right. not let the Rams get momentum, Right. you know, keep it in their end of the court, so to speak. Yeah, we'll see what happens as the Buffs lead it here at the half by a count of 17 to 3. We'll continue with the Holiday Inn Express halftime show right after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10 2. Choosing the right countertops for your kitchen can be tricky. Nowadays, there are hundreds of colors, patterns, and textures and materials that range from natural to engineered stone. Marble Depot is here for you throughout every step of the process. And yes, we do have a lot of options that might make that decision a little harder, but we're also going to ask the right questions so that you get the most out of your investment. So come by our showroom and let us help create what you've been dreaming of. And again, well, welcome back to West Texas A&M as we're here at Jayford Field. And let's take a look at our 
stats from the, or not our stats, but let's take a look at our highlights from the first half. And again, here is a fantastic pass to Olison over the middle who pulls this one in. He just couldn't keep his feet, but is able to pick up a big first down. It's one of the big uh, early completions for Nick Gerber. Then a little bit later on, here is a block punt. And again, coming out of this is Noah Bogardis, who comes up with a loose punt and is able to take it back in for the score. That got the bust on the scoreboard. They led at that point 7-3. to three. A little bit later on, watch Chris Thomas. We talked about him leading the team in tackles so far today. But watch this big hit right here as Chris comes up and just lowers the boom and stops that from being a big gain for Angelo State. Chris is pumped up, and we are too. And then a little bit later on, the Buffs are driving, and so they're pushed back to the seven. so they go again. Noah Bogardis, he takes it on the curl route, takes it in for the score, pushes the Buffs up 14 to three at that point. And then we'll see one more sack coming in for the Buffaloes as we watch Michael Smith. Watch him here as he's able to put pressure on the quarterback and taking down for the stop. Big Michael Smith on a sack right there as we the Buffs make their way back out here. You can see the lights flashing off in the distance. This, this crowd we is got a good into crowd. it, and so are the players, yeah, Bryce. They are, and a great crowd on hand for this one. They have been vocal, and that's exactly what you want for homecoming tonight. And uh, the Buffs lead this one 17-3. to <laughs> There's some, some coaches having some fun on the near sideline as well. And so both teams make their way back out here. Of course, the Buffs will be kicking off to start the second half. And it will be uh, Angelo that will be set to receive this one tonight as the Buffs lead it 17 to 3. You know, again, we talked about real quick 154 yards for Angelo, 35 plays. So they've had the ball more offensively, but the Buffs have done a good job to stop them. They've done a really good job against this run. You know, uh, 52 rushing yards and 48 of those have come from. Omayabu as he has six carries for 48 yards, an average of eight yards per carry. I, I expect for uh, Angelo State really to come out in this third quarter, Bryce, and pound the rock, get the run established. They, they were kind of throwing to set up the run in the first half. I think it'll be opposite in the second half. Yeah, I think so too. And again, the ground game is where they make you know, their hay. That's where they really thrive. And so they probably will want to try to establish that if they possibly can. And the Buffaloes, again, with a nice 17-3 lead, need the defense to come back out and play exactly the way they played in that first half. It was so good to see you. A lot of energy, a lot of flying around to the football. So the Buffs did a nice job here in that first half. But, Lucas, it's a two-half ball game, and so we're getting ready to get the second half underway in this one today. And so... And uh, Bryce, before we start the second half, great job by our Thunder Vision crew tonight. Our engineer director tonight, Miss Jamie Abbott, and the Thunder Vision camera crew. As always, outstanding. Glad to bring you this game on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10 too. Here is a big return potentially for Angelo State. Up to the 40, staying on his feet, reversing field at midfield. And Brandon Blair comes in and makes a tackle across midfield. So the fans were looking for a flag. Brandon Blair actually was the guy that was hit from behind. And surprisingly, there was no flag that came out for a block in the back. And then Brandle just got up and hustled back, saw that the, the receiver was coming back across the middle and was able to make the stop. A great field position in Buffalo territory at the 47-yard line was, for the Rams. That was Kyle Bradford on the nice kick return for Angelo State. So that's, if you're a Rams fan, that's what you wanted to see. A good start to this third quarter. They have the football already on the other side of the 50 in WT territory, and it's a Mayabu on first down. Look at this, pound the rock. You betcha. They run right into JT Cavender and get across the 45 to the 44-yard line to pick up a four yards. Xavier Rivera in on the stop as well, the big nose tackle. And again, that's what you want him to do is to be able to fill holes. And so he slid down to make that stop that particular time and help JT to prevent it from being a bigger game. So it sets up second down and a long six. Amayabu starts up the middle and cannot escape. The linebacker, was it 
Chris yeah. Thomas yet again. Yeah, Chris Thomas, that's his seventh tackle in the ball game again. And he has been able to play the last several weeks. You know he's been anxious to get out here and see what he can do. And again, just a great job of Chris sliding down the line, fighting off a block and being able to make the stop. So third down and eight, the Rams were very good in the first half on third downs, picking up four of nine. They bring the receiver in motion, a show. Throw across the middle, off the mark just a little bit, and a late penalty marker comes flying uh, well, in from the back, Judge. You're going to get the buffs for holding, The receiver that time, trying to come out of his break, was Noah Massey. And Massey, I thought, stumbled, but the officials are saying that he was pushed, and so that's why they threw the flag. I didn't see it, but again, actually, it didn't look like there was anybody there. They're now calling it a holding penalty. And so before he came out of his break, they're saying that their jersey was grabbed, and that's where the hold came about. Hunter doesn't necessarily agree as we see him on the sideline. But it does set up a first and 10 for the Rams to the 35. Penalties have played a part in this game, six penalties against Angelo State. In the first half, the Buffs now their fifth penalty in the game. Wide open receiver on the far side, Williams, and he spins off of a tackle and gains close to a, a first down. Good pitch and catch on the outside again to Kel Williams. Well, Gage Smith taps his chest, say my fall because he was so wide open. Nobody rotated over on that receiver on the far sideline. Nobody picked him up, and so that was an easy pitch and catch for Brockhorse in order to find his receiver to pick up nine on that particular reception. So second down and short. He'll throw again through the hands of the intended receiver. Footsteps coming. And so the pass dropped by Noah Massey. Trying to get it to him again. Again, he goes up and comes over, playing more of a tight end. So he goes up and comes across the middle. They go with a fast snap. And the official wasn't even out of the way yet. And there's a flag. And so the official wasn't even out of the way when they snapped the ball. So they're talking this over, and it should be movement against Angelo State. Let's see if that's what the call is going to be. As the referee steps back from the pile of officials. The officials were not set to play. There's no play on the third down. So it's not a penalty really against anybody. It just says, hey, guys, the officials were not ready. And so we're going to replay this down, well, basically. And, and Hunter saw what I saw, which was moving on the left side of the line before this, when the ball, before the ball was snapped. And so he feels like there should have been a flag on that one. But like I said, the official was still in the middle. He was just barely out of the way of the center. On third and short, play action, receiver open, and it's a touchdown, Rams. Yeah, the Buffs just got caught that time. They weren't ready for it. A nice up and in pattern that time for the Rams as they were able to get that one across the middle. Yeah, Noah Massey makes up for that pass that he just dropped. That was perfect. He held on, then he drug Buff defenders into the end zone. And you could see Bryce, Tobias Harris, after that play, he was really upset, turned around, kind of barking at some teammates there. Miscommunication potentially in the secondary on a coverage, but it's a touchdown. Angelo State hushes this homecoming crowd, and the extra point from Fuller is up, and it is good. So the Rams come out of the locker room and start the third quarter just like Coach Gersh wanted them to as they get the touchdown. There's a replay. Look at it. Perfect throw. The catch made, and the Rams now only trail. Actually, that extra point was missed, and so it's going to be 17-9. Oh, I thought it was good. I thought they were throwing their hands in the air, but nevertheless, we'll take advantage of that as well. Back after this. WT student-athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish and restore muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. Go Bucks! Well, again, the Buffs 
as they come out in the second half, unable to hold Angelo as they go on a five-play drive. It covers 47 yards. It's a 26-yard pass to Noah Massey from Brokarts. The extra point is missed. That's the only good thing that comes out of that probably. And the Buffaloes now lead it 17-9. to And here's the kick that's going to go into the end zone. And it'll be brought out by Heston Marshall. Stumbles was tripped up as he gets cut down short of the 15 yard line. Good hustle by Angelo State. Give credit to number 29, Jordan McKinney. Retro freshman out of Waco, La Vega High School, one of the top high school programs in the country. Well, again, a nice job. Huston kind of was trying to determine do I bring it out or do I go ahead and wait and bring it out to the 25? Instead, he thought he had the speed to get to the outside on the near side of the field. And just a good job on special teams play by the Rams. So Angelo State, impressive on that drive. Let's see if the Buffs have an answer. Khalil Harris with a cut, gets to the edge, and shows his speed right there. A nice gain of maybe about six yards. You know, and Harris is a patient runner, and that was one thing that, that Coach Hughes talked to me about on Thursday, Bryce, as he said, it's a strength, but also can be a weakness. He said sometimes Khalil just needs to put his foot in the ground and go. Yes. Yeah, and that, that's you like to see that. But again, that time he did put his foot in the ground, but he only saw an opening to the outside. That's why he ran and was able to pick up six on the carry. Here's Harris again. Good hole opens up across that right side, and he's got a buffs first down to the 30-yard line. Let's talk about this offensive line doing what – Coach Hughes wants them to do, obviously, push up front and create some running holes for Khalil Harris, Jacoby Lott, the transfer from Kansas, Adam Alcorta, Zane Madison, Dietrich, Parker, Hannah. This is a handoff this time to the left for only two yards. And I'll tell you what, that is two yards that weren't there, so a nice job by Harris to at least pick up two falling forward at that time for the Buffaloes. But, yeah, back to what you said, the offensive line, again, when they have good communication, and that's amongst themselves, and you're talking about Zane Madison calling it out as they get set to run the play and making sure the block is where they need it to be, they obviously have done great things this season. And Patrick Gray, he's in there right now, number 66, retro freshman from San Antonio. Out of the gun. This time they hand it to Blair. A quick penalty marker is thrown and not much going. A loss of one, actually, on that run as Angelo State defensively, uh, 93, Tredarius Colbert. Well, there's a helmet on the ground, and so that is one of the linebackers. Offside, defense, number four, ah. five-yard penalty. So it goes against down. Angelo State, offsides. Gary you know, McCoy's whose helmet came off, he ought to go out for a play. That is a lot of beef in right now for <laughs> yeah. the Rams. Tredarius yeah. Colbert, 346 pounds, Jakari McCoy, 310 pounds, and Weston Bauer, He's the lightweight, Bryce, at 6'1", 265. <laughs> well, Weston, you got to put on some weight, right? Yeah. And he's a talented player out of Brady, Texas. With the penalty, it makes it second down and three for West Texas A&M. Blair will take the carry and has a first down. Good blocking again up front for West Texas A&M. This is what they want to do because now you can work in some play action. You can roll Gerber out of the pocket. Establishing that run. They're going up tempo, too. They'll keep it on the ground. Blair hit hard this time. It again falls forward, picks up two. And so that's what you want your running backs. You want them running north and south. And so when they do fall, at least if they can fall forward, they pick up a yard or two. So Khalil Harris getting a breather right now. Blair the feature back. And both teams poised to come out here in this third quarter and run the football. Buffs have the tight end in on the right side. Karn Bay. Gerber is going to keep it and run to the left, and he has the speed to reach out and get a first down. I think. Well, I was going to say it, it is. Yeah, yeah, he spotted. I thought at first he was going to be short, but he had already passed the yard marker even before he reached that football out, and so but the official didn't finally mark it correctly. And so first and 10 in Ram territory at the 45. Again, that extra point, huge for Angelo State because instead of it being a seven-point game, it's an eight-point lead for WT. They lead 17-9, under 10 minutes to play, third quarter. 
Compton with the carry, and he is taken down from behind. Big defensive play by Josh Quentin, the 240-pound senior linebacker out of Lubbock Cooper High School. That's a nice open field tackle because really there was some running room for uh, Compton to run to, but if the linebacker doesn't come up and grab him around the waist, then he has an open lane to run in. So it's second down and 11 after the one-yard loss. They go play action. Gerber going for a home run to Markel Stevens Peppers, and he overshoots what is the fastest receiver on this West Texas A&M team. And good to see Markel back. Bryce, he got hurt uh, back in the Colorado School of Mines game. Yeah, and again, that time. So Markel's kind of angling toward the middle of the field and then tries to go to the outside. Had a little separation, maybe used his hand for a little separation from the defender, but nevertheless was getting to the outside, just couldn't make that complete. So it is third down and long here for WT. They've moved the ball into Angelo State territory, but now facing some trouble. And look at all the Rams up on the line of scrimmage. They bring them all, and Gerber, in trouble, escapes the pocket and just has to sling it out of bounds. And, Bryce, that, that's a play. You've got to come with something different. You've got yeah. to have a hot when route. You, when you see those guys coming up like that, walking up to the line, there has okay. to be that second call, and that time it didn't look like there was. Either that or Gerber didn't notice it. He's talking to the coaches on the sideline, but they're saying, you see them walking up, you've got to check out of what you're going to call and go to that alternative play. And, and I think that that's what, you know, we obviously can't hear, but Coach Martin, you would think they have that good relationship and they trust Gerber. He's got to make that call on his own and make a play adjustment. So Angelo State defense does a good job, holds. They're going to get the football back after Coash will punt it away. He hits at the 20-yard line and takes a great bounce, and Angelo State will pick it up dangerously inside the 10-yard line. Surprised that Pitts did that with four buff defenders all around him. And how about Aaron Coash? That was at halftime, Bryce. The punting stats, 53-yard average for Aaron Coash. There's a timeout on the, That's pretty good, huh? Yeah, we'll take it. Okay, timeout on the field. We'll step aside, be back with more football from Buffalo Stadium. Buffs lead 17-9 as you watch WT and Angelo State here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10 2. When you choose natural gas, chocolate chip cookies get a little tastier. Homes get a little cozier. Bank accounts tend to put on some weight. Towels get fluffier. Showers stay hotter for longer. And our blue planet gets a little greener. When it comes to choosing energy that's clean and efficient, nothing else could be more American. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. Well, welcome back as the oh, Buffaloes yeah, here are showing the dance cam of the crowd. And so... Good crowd on hand. It's so fun for homecoming to see this good, strong crowd on hand. They got on the hill here on the south end zone. We've got the bleachers and the corners filled all the way around. Just great to see here tonight with the Buffs leading this one 17 to 9. But the Rams bring their offense back out. Last time they were able to go on a drive and score a touchdown. And so let's see what the Buffs defense can do as they come back out. Had a nice long conversation with JT Haddon and Hunter Hughes and they break and make their way back out onto the field of play. Well, it's the same thing. We're talking about the offense needing consistency. So does your defense. you got to play four quarters of football when you play talented football teams and that's uh, what Hunter Hughes knows. Players have to follow through and make the plays, but Angelo State made all the plays to start this third quarter on that touchdown drive on first down. Pass thrown out of bounds incomplete as WT had a good defensive rush and forced Bronkhorst to get rid of that football before he was ready. I was looking in the end zone. I thought at first there was a flag, but I think it's just a piece of paper that's down there. And again, with Bronkhorst running, rolling around into the end zone. And so what we would love to see, obviously, is a holding penalty that would take place out there. But nevertheless, incomplete pass brings up second and ten. Two receivers to the far side, the handoff to Odom. Big hole over the right side, and Odom is cut down by Escalante. 
Short of the first down, a good run up to the 14-yard line, pickup of six. Yeah, Escalante comes up at his safety position. He's watching all the way, actually is able to come up and just kind of read the running lane that time and comes up and makes the stop, lowers his helmet, and again stops one of the big running backs for the Rams. So a key third down for Angelo State and for this West Texas A&M defense. Bronc course. Will throw incomplete, did not get his uh, pass, get that full motion into that throw that was intended for push show. You know, Eric Collins coming up, Eric was putting pressure on him and so he couldn't get his feet set. And so he had to throw it early and in doing so threw it wide of his receiver. And so that brings up fourth down and about four and a half. So look at Coach Hughes uh, on the sideline. And this was a big game for Hunter Hughes and yes. his staff this week, Bryce. You knew Angelo State was very talented coming into town, homecoming, coming off of two losses. And the Buffs have done a really nice job to this point, leading 17-9, 8-16 to play third quarter. They bring some pressure. The punt is away, though, and this is a good one. Tobias Harris backpedals and takes it from the 31-yard line. Looking for a block, reverses fields. Trying to find something at the 30 and then just slides down. And that is going to be a penalty that's going to be thrown in uh, as the hit was made. One of the Angelo State special teams players, Tom McDade, yeah, came up and lowered his helmet. And they made helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. And so I think that's why the penalty came about. Let's see if we can get a as look at Tobias this Tobias was trying to go. He had nowhere to go. And so he just kind of gave up himself. And in doing so, the guy lowered his helmet and came in. Let's take a look here as he comes to give up on this play. Yeah, he was leading with his helmet on that one. And so he had already left his feet. So you could say he was launching himself. So the so the key on this one, though, Bryce, if he leads with the helmet, but if the helmet doesn't connect, if it's the shoulder pad that connects, what's the call? But the other side of that, too, is he launched his body. Okay. And so he left his feet in order to launch himself and make the stop. I think that's what they're having a conversation about. I think this could go either way. Well, it could either be no penalty, right, or it could be a personal targeting. yeah, targeting penalty, and that'll be a personal foul. Let's see what happens here. Good job on the replay. Our replay operator tonight, Mr. Jacob Griffin. To look at Jeff Gersh. Jeff originally, uh, Bryce, his alma mater. Let's get the call here first. Unnecessary roughness, late hit, gets the kicking team, number 85. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 50 of the kicking oh. team. It's a double whammy. 15 yards, then we'll assess half the distance to the goal, first down. So, what? I think he got the signals wrong he again. He got it again. Both were against Okay. <laughs> well, the other officials are marking off the penalty against the Rams. They're just kicking team 15 yards and then another 15 yards added onto it. So they didn't call a targeting. They called late hit. And then an unsportsmanlike on another player. So that's 30 yards. Yeah. And so they got to walk this one off. I was going to say that uh, head coach Jeff Gersh. Okay, they're Let's step aside and take yeah. a quick timeout. We'll come back, and the Buffs will have the football. We'll straighten out all the penalties here. WT leads 17-9, third quarter. We're back after these messages. This is what a new heart valve looks like. This is what a bypassed artery looks like. And this is what a repaired aortic aneurysm looks like. The BSA Heart and Vascular Team is here to help you live life to the fullest. From our state-of-the-art cardiac technologies to our dedicated heart specialists, our goal is to help you take the very best care of your heart so you can enjoy everything else that matters to you. BSA for life. Thank you. 
back to Buffalo Stadium as WT leads 17-9. There's a look at head coach Jeff Gersh and what I was going to say, Bryce, he was the defensive coordinator, obviously, here for the Rams, but his alma mater, St. Ambrose University, which is located in, any guesses? St. Ambrose, I would say, is that in Florida? It is in Davenport, Iowa. Oh, Davenport, Iowa. Okay. The Ambrose Fighting Bees. Wow. And so, well, great field position for the Buffaloes as they have this deep, or in, I should say, Ram territory. You talk about Iowa. Iowa had a big win over Penn State today. The top five matchup. Buffs have the football after the penalties. Khalil Harris breaks one tackle and is able to get a good run across the 35, maybe to the 34-yard line. Tough with, running from Harris. With those two penalties, this is where the offense now has to, they had to have a conversation and say, listen, we got to get down and get points on the scoreboard. We got to give the defense a chance to rest, but we got to have a sustained drive and get points on the scoreboard. They work quickly. Harris with the carry. Man, that was Angelo State brought a blitz again. It, it's a chess match, and Angelo State, you know they're going to bring pressure. The Buffs just have to figure out where is that pressure coming from, and you can't run plays that go right into the blitz. So we had two running backs. Jared Compton was out there with Khalil again. They had put Compton in motion, okay. and it would have been better to give him the football because the blitz came, and they keyed in on Khalil Harris and made the stop. It's a third down and seven for West Texas A&M. Gerber slings it to the outside. The catch is made by Begardis, but where did he step out of bounds? That's going to be enough, yeah. He does have a first down. Nice. That keeps the drive alive. And again, it looked like I thought actually Nick had, I didn't see Begardis down here in the corner, and I thought he had misread who he was trying to throw it to. But he nevertheless, threw that hard. He did, yeah. Good fastball. You couldn't hear anything, obviously, from up here, but it's like when tennis match on those players grunt. Gerber threw that ball hard. Here's Khalil Harris. Yeah, he runs straight up the middle for a nice game. This is what has been great to see in this third quarter is West Texas A&M running the football in between the tackles. Well, again, that running game has been good for the Buffaloes tonight. They go quickly on second down and short, but Angelo State was ready for that. No gain. They stopped Khalil right in his tracks. And you like the tempo? I like the up-tempo because I, I, or I would like to see the, the Buffs go with a little quicker tempo maybe because right now they're kind of slowing it off a little bit. And so you'd like to see them pick up the tempo, keep the Rams off balanced a little bit. Now they go Jordan Johnson under center as the quarterback. Angelo State brings everybody up to the line on third down and short. And they were trying to get the Rams to jump. Well, they made contact. The Rams made contact, so it should be offsides against the Rams. Let's see what the call is going to be. Offside yeah. with contact. Defense number 93. So you saw Alcorta move, but the reason why it was not against the offense is because. Yeah, because the defense came across and made contact, and then that's when Alcorta moved after the contact was made. And so you're, you're allowed to, def, you know, in, a, in a sense, defend yourself. And so he was able to stand up, so it looked like he was in motion. But it's because the contact was made, and that gives the Buffaloes a first and 10 as they spotted now at the 14-yard line. Yeah, Buffs have got to be thinking six points right here on this drive. Maxwell Perez on the field. He's the tight end set just off from Alcorta on the near side. So, again, you see them walking up, so you know they're bringing pressure. Gerber in the gun. Has Olison on the outside through his hands. And I tell you what, quickly closing on that play right there was the defensive back for Angelo State. That was yeah. an impressive play. Yeah. Coming up to. Was it Kari Watson? Yeah. Coming up to put pressure on him. And, again, you're right. He had great closing pissed, speed. Actually. And so, in doing so, he was able to knock the ball away. Of 16, Andrew Pitts, the redshirt freshman from McKinney, who does have two interceptions this season. So it's second down and 10. Compton gets to the outside. Jared at the 10, the 5. Compton, did he get in? It, Touchdown! I was going to say, it looked like, uh, there's the official. He's back here in the corner. It looked like he pushed the ball across and was able to touch the pylon. But watch this. He is stopped right here and keeps his feet, gets to the outside, and watch him reach for the pylon, I thought. 
That's see, what it looked like. It kind of looked like he reached for the fly that, line. That, Bryce, that is a play. If you watch Division One football, that, that would be a review. Be, they would review it, yes, absolutely. But we'll take the six points to push the lead to 23-9. to nine. This is Division Two football, and it's a Lone Star Conference rivalry game between Angelo State and West Texas A&M. The extra point is good by Gage Urias. Buffs have an answer after Angelo State scores in the third quarter. Jared Compton gets into the end zone, and West Texas A&M leads 23-9 over Angelo State. We'll take a timeout, come back with the kickoff right after this. We are Carpet Tech, and we are family. More than carpet cleaners, we're a team. Diving right in, not afraid to invest in our work and each other. We're killing it day in and day out, never shrieking from a challenge. Our people are one part passion, one part grit, and about a zillion parts awesome. And we are always looking to add to our family. So what are you waiting for? Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium as the Buffs are able to go on a seven play 38 yard drive and we knew because of that 30 yard kickoff penalty we knew they needed to take advantage of the of the great field position Jared Compton takes it in from 13 yards out a Urias with the extra point the buffs push their lead to 24 to 9 over the Rams Gonzalez kickoff will be fielded from the eight yard line dropped and then picked right back up by Pitts and look at his speed across the 30 so still a good return there is a penalty marker Back at the 18-yard line, a well away, away, away from where the return was made. Yeah, we'll see what this one's going to be. But again, just shows you the speed of some of the specialty players that the Rams have. And again, Pitts that time dropped it, had to find the handle on the football, picked it up, then still was able to find a running lane to take During off. The return. Return. Personal foul gets the return team. Oh. Blind side block number 38. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So that one occurred well down the field. He returned it to the 35, but Oof. the penalty was at the 18, and so they mark it off, or the 17, I guess, because they mark it down to the eight-yard line. Coach Gersh really upset after that one, and Bryce, that is the 11th penalty in the ball game by Angelo State. Hand off over the right side. Good hole. A penalty marker is thrown quickly after a nine-yard gain. Well, it looked like Eric Collins was being held a little bit. Let's see if that's what it's going to be because he was trying to get around some pressure, and it looked like he was two guys that were blocking him, and it looked like they grabbed his jersey, but we'll see if that's the case. It was Greer on the carry for the Rams. Personal foul, chop block against the oh, offense, wow. number 58, number 76. Half so that was the two that, that were on Eric goal. Collins. And so that chop block right there as Eric was trying to come up from his linebacker spot. And so they'll mark this one halfway back. Rams making... Some costly mistakes. It's still first down, though. Bronkhorst airs it down the sideline, and it's incomplete. Intended for Dunham in coverage, Escalante. Yeah, Gage Smith is there as well, and that time they made contact, but it was Smith going for the You're football. Right. You're right, it was Gage so Smith. Gage, uh, there could have been a penalty the other way for offensive pass interference as Gage was going for the football. But the officials let him duel it out there as that one sails out of bounds. This is a big spot here for Angelo State, deep in their own territory. Greer trying to bounce it outside, but look at Eric Collins string the play out and stop the running back for a loss of a yard or two. And that is just exactly how you play that from the linebacker. It really position. is. They overloaded the left side or the near side. They came that side with the run, and Eric Collins just strings it out, as you said, as he is able to take on two blockers, slide down the line, and then still make the tackle. That just shows you that veteran leadership from Eric Collins. Yeah, this defense has been something else tonight for the Buffs. They've only got 60 rushing yards to Angelo State, who came into tonight's game 
averaging over 230 yards. Here's a play that is connected down the sideline, a huge pass completion for Angelo State into the hands of number 80, Kel Williams. That was just pure speed right there on display for Angelo State. Yeah, Ty Dillon was the corner on that one. He got burned on it. Gage Smith didn't roll over in time to put pressure on, and so that's where that pass completion, enough for a first down. Good play by the Rams. Huge play for Angelo State. Hole opens up for Amaya Boo, and he hurdles over Escalante, a gain of 11, nearly 12 yards on the run. So remember that pass play. Yeah. Because that could have been the ignition that Angelo State that needed. That was big. And again, the buffs, that's where you can't have those defensive mental lapses. You gotta you gotta know when do you need to rotate over when, you know, like this. So you got a double stack on the far right sideline. Omayabu well, cuts inside, short gain of one. Chris Thomas along with Xavier Rivera in on the stop. 74, he's been very good for uh, WT tonight, that nose tackle position. Yeah, well, yeah say the X-Man, I mean, he has really been coming up the middle there a little bit. Eric Collins that time came down the line, forced it back to the inside, and so that's why they were able to wrap it up for only a yard gain. They'll roll out Bronkhorst. And a wide open receiver, Kellen Pichot, with nobody around him at the 30 yard line, just took his eyes off. The yeah, football. mix up in coverage that time because, again, they sent another receiver deep. And so Ty Dillon rolls down with him. And so nobody is in this flat. And so they bring another receiver across to the flat. He's wide open. Thankfully, that just went through his hands. Buffs catch a break there. Pichot usually makes those catches. Third down and long, 3.02 to play, third quarter action. WT leads 24 to 9. Trying to bounce back after a two game losing streak. Angelo State, they're on a two game win streak. Brock Horse over the middle. And I tell you what, Bryce Escalante was looking for a hit right there. If yes. his eyes would have been up, he yes. maybe would have intercepted yeah, the Yeah, he was looking to hit him, and that's exactly right. He had his shoulder pads lowered. Get your helmet up, watch for the football, because that could have been an easy pick, and he knows it right now. He's quite upset with himself, as he should have been able to rotate and come up and pick up the football. And so Kate Fuller will come on again to punt for the Rams. Tobias Harris back at its 10-yard line. Again, remember how this game started, Bryce, with the blocked punt. Yeah, after the Buffs were behind 3 to nothing, they got a blocked punt. And returned it for a touchdown. And they've been in front ever since. This is a good one that Tobias will take from the 6-yard line. Trying to get to the edge. He's at the 15 and then has to get out of bounds. That's one thing the Rams have done a good job of. They've really strung out went side to side and not allowed Tobias to get yeah, the they've, edge. Yeah, they've read, is there they've, a watched, they've watched some tape. And there, so, there is a flag. Right and, I, and I think that's going to be on a block that occurred as a player kind of went in front of another. He had his back to him, but nevertheless, he kind of shielded and ran in the way. And so I think that's what that penalty is going to be. They're taking their time discussing this one. Uh, so I, they're now they're pointing toward the Rams. Oh goodness, Jeff Gersh, he. he so if, if that's himself. the case, they may add it to the end of the run here. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to run it to the end of the run. Is it a personal an, foul? That's a 15-yard penalty. We haven't heard anything from the official yet. Personal, Personal. Foul, unnecessary roughness. Gets the kicking team, number 45, 15 yards, first down. Well, I didn't see that yeah, anywhere, I but. And neither did Jeff Gersh. So Angela State, they've got to compose themselves as it's not going their way right now in terms of these penalties. Buffs leading 24 to 9. 243 remains here in the third quarter. Gerber in the gun. They'll give it to Khalil Harris. And Harris somehow squeezes through Hunter Kyle's 
would-be tackle and then is kind of stood up after a gain of about four yards. 2.30 left to play here in the third quarter. Buffs lead it 24-9. to nine. Each team has scored a touchdown here in the third quarter. Buffs the beneficiary of the extra point. That's why the difference or the margin in the lead right now for WT. Still a lot of time in this ball game. And Gerber on second down. Pump fake has a man open. It's Begardus down the sideline and it's just out of his reach. I tell you what, Begardus ran a good route and the corner bit on that pump fake and Nick Gerber almost had it. Yeah, he really did. And again, he had the pump fake and so that brought the secondary up a little bit. They bit on it. And so in doing so, then he was able to get it up uh, up the field. Tyree Tipton makes his way out there as he's on the far side of the field. Yeah, Tyree had a good stats game last week on the road at Western Oregon. Eight catches, 123, and his first touchdown. So a third down and six. Rams defense trying to get off the field here. They bring pressure. Gerber in all kinds of trouble. And that one, he just barely got out of the tackle box. Yeah, and, and I, that, that's what the Ram coaches are wondering. They yeah. think that could have been intentional grounding. Yeah, and I, the, the question is, again, they go over and talk to Nick because he didn't check out. He saw the pressure coming, and he didn't check out of it to go to a different play. Yeah, you could tell when, when Angela State has committed to the blitz, Bryce, everybody knows it, right? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all up there. I mean, it's no, there's no question about what's happening. And so, again, that's where you have that conversation. You have a second play called, and you check out of it. Coash will punt it away. And Pitts cut down. Great special teams play for the Buffaloes. <laughs> And that was Heston Marshall. Yeah, came up and did showed his speed and got up there quickly and just kind of grabbed the ankle and tripped him up. So what nicely fun, done. What a fun game this has been, Bryce. I'll tell you what, it has been. And so uh, it's great to see how the Buffaloes have responded after that tough road loss last week to Western Oregon, especially the defense. I've been really pleased with the way they've come out ready to play in this one tonight against a very talented Angelo Rams team. Again, highly ranked uh, in the country as far as their run game is concerned. On first down, the Rams put it on the ground. They give it to Alfred Greer. And that's that a guy, nice run. I'll tell you what, that guy just, you know, he, he, doesn't, he's not, he doesn't shy away. He's not afraid to hit somebody. And then he finds that extra gear to squirt through the hole. And he just shoots through that. You know, Bryce, we were watching, or I was watching earlier today, the Oklahoma Sooners play. You were? I, I actually was. <laughs> Greer reminds me, though, of an old running back for OU, Quentin Griffin. He takes the carry here, gets around the edge. There's another first down because he's not very tall. He's 5'6", right. but right. he's strong. He's got strong legs, 180-pound uh, sophomore, yeah, and obviously the quickness. He can catch the yeah. football. And he, he's so fast. That's the thing. I mean, he just finds that extra gear and is able to get away from defenders. And so, again, that was a great example. That time he got to the outside and then just turned it upfield. So first down for Angelo State. Stay on the ground. This time, Omayabu gets the carry. And a good tackle by Taylor Hickerson after a two-yard pickup by Omayabu. And that's how you got to tackle these uh, big running backs from Angelo State. You better wrap, wrap up them up. Low. Grab Yeah, grab the legs. Wrap them up. Nixon did a nice job. Hickerson did a nice job that time because he had to fight off the block and then still make the tackle. So they only gave him one yard. Second down and nine. Nearing the end of the third quarter, just 20 seconds to play. Buffs up 24 to 9. Bronkhorst has to throw it to a safety valve, Amayabu, and now he'll get to the outside and a collision at the end of that one. Tobias Harris comes up, and both Harris and Amayabu are shaken up after that play. Well, again, they both lowered their shoulder pads, Whoa. and it was Mano Ibano right there. Tobias has stayed out in the field. He's going, all right, let's go. And so that was exactly what they were looking at. Officials are going to come in. I think that's the quarter. And it is. That is the end of the third quarter. 
So we have got another classic Angelo State, West Texas A&M rivalry game going into the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. We're back after this timeout here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10 too. It's got the looks, the style, the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium. The Buffs lead this one by a count of 24 tonight as we look at the Buffs out in the middle of the field. The lights are going here for homecoming as we head into quarter number four. And again, the Buffs with the lead, 24 to nine. And they just need to play a solid 15 minutes defensively here and come out and try to wrap up the Rams. But the Rams on the move right now as they are in Buffalo territory at the 44 yard line. I like that, Bryce. Jump around. Yeah. Jump around. And Tobias Harris is still out there, so he looked like he got the worst of that. Odom tries to bounce it outside, gets a good block from Dunham, and then steps out of bounds at the 40 yard line. So CJ Odom, one of many talented running backs on this team. He's 6'1", 227 pounds, and averages 6.4 yards a carry. JT Cavender comes over and pushes him out of bounds for a couple yard gain. Actually, a three yard gain. Yeah, that, that was carry. short. He thought he got more than that, but yeah. whistles blow, and a penalty marker flies. Yeah. This is either movement by the Rams, or did the Buffs jump? WT's oh, pointing toward Angelo Paul State. Stars, so. Offense, 58, five-yard penalty. So they'll That's mark them back five yards, the Rams, for a procedure penalty. And that comes from the official on the far sideline. And right there where head coach Jeff Gersh is at. And so able to throw the flag on that movement. Still second down, but now a 12 yard. And off to Odom, and Thomas couldn't make the tackle. Odom tries to escape, and was it Escalante that came up and made a good tackle on the second effort there by the Buffs defense. Short gain for the running back, Odom. C 6'1", 227 pounds. CJ was on the sideline in the third quarter. He was doing sprints. So I don't know if he was cramping up, tightening up or what, but he was trying to get loose. So they got him back in there on that particular running play. Okay, Alfred Greer checks back in. And the Buffs crowd gets up on their feet, makes noise on third down and 10. Brockhorst throws short, could not get all of his power into that throw, and it falls incomplete, fourth down, fourth and down. Angelo State will bring on the punt team. Another good defensive stand good, by WT. Good stop by the defense that time, and again, you, you kind of give your bow a little bit, but then you don't break. You want to kind of get up there quickly and make sure you're ready to go, and the bus were on that series headed here into the fourth quarter. I did find some Lone Star Conference score updates for you, Bryce. Okay. <laughs> At Ratliff Stadium, UTPB in a close one, not really, 75 to nothing. They defeat Lincoln, California. Yeah. Uh, Western New Mexico leads Eastern New Mexico going into the fourth quarter, 40 to 37. Here's the punt. Tobias will signal fair catch and the make it. The flag came flying. I mean, even every before time the ball we've got had a there. punt tonight, there's been yeah, a flag. The flag came flying. That was before it, it even got to Tobias, and so. I guess we'll see what this one is. The officials have been busy, to say the least, tonight. 
No limit on these flags. No. The only other score uh, to update you on, Midwestern State leads Texas A&M Kingsville. Seven minutes to play, fourth quarter, 27 to 13. Holy. And we thought that would Return be a good game. Number three. Half the is to go. Holding on the buffs. On Tobias? Well, that can't be right. He, he was the punt returner. He was man. the punt returner. And that's what I mean. The, it came before he, I, I, I don't get that one. And so, okay. Oh, well. And I think that's what Hunter Hughes is asking right here. How can it be on the kick return guy? The, the field judge <laughs> smiles and turns away because he knows it can't be. And so, nevertheless, they do mark it back for the buffs. That was a random flag. On first down, Jared Compton will get the carry. And Quentin with a good, sure tackle cuts Compton down for a loss of one back to the five-yard line. Yeah, he started to go north and south and then wanted to dance away as he'll come out and Khalil will head in. And this is where the coaches want you running just to the north end zone. They don't want you going east and west. Buffs have that 15-point lead, but doesn't feel comfortable it, it, it yet, doesn't, does it? And right now they have the football on their own five-yard line. Gerber will hand it off to Harris. Just runs north and south. South to north, I should say, and picks up maybe two. So this bring is a up a third critical and long. third down. Yeah, third and long. And so, again, if you're Russ Martin, you're trying to find what's my best third and long I haven't called in the ball game that we seem we feel comfortable with when you're deep in your own territory that's an easy one to pull out of the yeah. playbook third down and again Angela State shows that they're coming they will bring pressure Gerber in trouble throws and he did get outside the pocket just Threw it over the head of Carn Bay. And that again, as we talked about so much with Angelo tonight, same thing for your quarterback. WT is he's in the end zone. And if there's a holding penalty, that'll come back to haunt you a little bit. So So Andrew Pitts, again, last week's Lone Star Conference special teams player of the week, will have a chance here. He's gonna come, go back to return this punt standing on the in, WT 45 yeah, yard line. In WT territory. Need a good punt from Coash. See if the Rams put on a return or if they will bring pressure. Coash's punt will be taken and the Buffs special teams, they missed a tackle. Pitts reverses field. About three missed tackles on that play right there, resulting in a short return, but great field position for Angelo State. At the WT 40-yard line, the Rams are going to have the football when we come back. 12.08 to play, fourth quarter. WT still leading 24-9. We're back with more football from Buffalo Stadium right after this. Welcome back to Buffalo Stadium. The Buffs lead this one 24 to 9. And deep in their end zone, they punt this one away. Angelo will have great field position at the WT 40 yard line to start their next attempt with a drive here. And again, you're asking a lot of your defense. You're asking them to stiffen up and to and they have tonight. That's been the nice thing. They have done a great job of really battling the battling what's going on with the Rams here tonight. And again, controlling that run game as Angelo has 90 yards. Yeah, you know, the, three quarters. the stats don't look flashy. WT only has, what's the yardage up to 219 now? 219 yards. Okay. Well, that's not even, we're not caught up here yet. And so 
And so but that's what we had. What they have done defensively to this point has been very impressive. But can they hold here Angelo State on first down? The pass complete to the outside. That's going to be a first down. Broncos is going to keep competing. This guy's tough. Well, and they're going to go with their, their NASCAR offense now. They're yep. going to go. They're going to pick up the tempo. And so they're going to try a lot of patterns to the outside, either side of the field, and try to stretch the defense, especially that secondary, try to move them out a little ways. Quick pass on the outside, caught again. A block allows the receiver to get up the field and gain six yards on first down. Ibrahim Kanate in on the tackle. So they've gone to the left side twice. Now expect him to come probably to the near side this time. They do bring out a tight end. Actually run almost a double tight end set on this. Rasheen Green. They go into him on the far side, number zero. And the clock runs nearing 11 minutes to play in the ball game. Play action. They roll the quarterback to the right. Bronc horse hit as he throws. And incomplete. I was waiting. Buff, Buff's I probably was, fortunate there. Yeah, that was a I lot was, of jersey being grabbed out there. I was waiting. Eric Collins was down there in coverage that time and had a little bit quicker guy that he was trying to stay up with. And I wasn't sure whether or not there would be a flag thrown on that one. So third and five for the Rams. The 20, about the WT 25-yard line. They send Pichot in motion, so three receivers are to the right. They hand it off and going nowhere. Stopped in the backfield for a huge loss. They tried to go to Greer, and was it Michael Smith? Yes. Michael Smith read it perfectly, playing that right end position that time. He slides down. He sees the man in motion, so he slides down the line and is able to make the stop. There's timeout taken, or is the officials getting together for something? I didn't see a flag anywhere. Clocks, you never know tonight. Though. I know. <laughs> Clock is stopped with 10.44 left to play. Coach Gersh is out there. He was talking to the official. I force a lot of conduct taunting against the defense, number seven. That's the 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So after Michael Smith had made the huge tackle for loss, the Buffs pick up a personal foul. Yikes. Well, Ibrahim Kanate is the one guilty of that. He's over there on that far sideline, and that's what Coach Gersh, I guess, was questioning. Okay. And so what was a great stop, Ooh. forced a fourth down, now gives them first at the 16. Greer's the running back. They fake it to him, throw to the outside, catch made by Green, and then he's going to drag Kanate close to the first down marker. Escalante comes up to clean up the tackle. Gain of nine yards, and yeah, that could have been well, you know, what Angelo State needed. That was big. That really was because you made a stop, and you were forcing them either to go for it fourth, which they probably would have, but still they would have had to go ten yards. So it's second down and two, so an eight-yard pass completion on first down. Greer just tries to go forward right into traffic, and J.T. Cavender not having it. The Middleothian High School linebacker comes up and makes the stop. So no gain on it, still brings up third down and two. They've got to get to the six yard line for a first down. Clock continues to roll. Yeah, if you're the Rams, this is a must score touchdown possession here. Bronkhorst going to run it. And now throws at the last second, and it's incomplete. Could not get on target with his receiver. Well, that's a break for the Buffaloes. It is. I thought he was going to run it. There. I did, too, at first. And then his receiver curled back to him, and he just threw it wide of his receiver. I mean, he, his, his receiver did what he's yeah. supposed to do. Of course, easy for me to say. I thought he was going to run. Eric Collins was the linebacker that was probably going to come up and try to make a tackle. So here it is, fourth down and two. What do the Rams have dialed up here? And it looks like they're bringing in, bringing in extra tight end here. Number 88, Kaysen Brown. 
He'll roll Bronkhorst out, throws, and it's incomplete through the hands of Cason Brown, and the Buffs defense holds on fourth down. <laughs> and Hunter Hughes is going crazy, and he should because that was a great stop by the Buffaloes, and again, it's caused, it's caused from pressure. It, it is, and again, they put pressure on the quarterback. He didn't have time to set his feet, had to throw on the run kind of at a weird angle, and then just couldn't complete the pass to his tight end. Let's look at it again. It, quarterback just throws it before he wants to. Bronkhorst off his back foot would have been a spectacular catch. It would have been, but again, good pressure by the Buffaloes as they force the turnover on downs. So Jordan Johnson is in at the running back spot right now, setting to the left of Gerber. It's Johnson on first down, runs oh, up the middle following blockers, a nice gain of about five, six yards there on first down. And if he could do that every time, I'd just keep giving it to him. And again, Jordan is one of those guys, he just finds a way to pick up an extra two or three yards when he carries the football. So if you're WT, you're going to be looking at that play clock and obviously letting it run down as far as you possibly can. The Buffs lead 24 to nine, under nine minutes to play in the ball game. Again, a game where Angelo State comes into this one four and one, they're ranked in the top 20. The Buffs reeling a little bit, two and three. Johnson again sheds a tackler, breaks another one, boom, it's first, gets the down, first down. And that's exactly what you want. Just let him lumber up the field and just use his big size to power over people, and he does so picks up the first down for the buffs. He makes me want to start talking like John Madden when he's running the ball, right? <laughs> Boom! Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's the thing. He, li he, he likes the contact and he, you know, makes contact. He's not a shying away from it. He'll take on those defenders and keeps his feet churning. The thing about Jordan is he's running over defenders but probably has a smile on his face and helping defenders up after the play. Great kid. Been in, around this WT program for a long time, his final season. Johnson carries again. Yeah, that one kind of, that one did develop well that time because Nick kind of carried with him down to the far sideline and before he gave it to him, and so he didn't get a hold of the football yet. It was Josh Quentin that came in and made the stop. Second down and nine to go khalil harris comes in and jordan will get a breather here so now after dealing with the heavyweight running back now you got to worry about khalil harris and his speed and they stop him good job for angelo state defensively it's a loss of a yard so that'll bring up third and ten for the buffaloes we have mentioned hunter kyle a lot tonight the linebacker for angelo state number 24. yeah he has a nose for the football he really knows where to read the angles where the running lane is going to be and he's able to slide in that time to help make the stop he's got seven tackles leading angelo state right now and it's third down and 10. Let's see if Nick Gerber and the Buffs offense can pick up what would be a huge first down here. Going down the far sideline and incomplete. Great coverage by Deshaun Douglas as he was blanketing Noah Bogardus. And so WT has to punt. Angelo State defense does the job. Well, and I know you want a home run there, but again, you would rather see something over the middle. Um, where somebody can get it and then run after the catch. And so, um, again, trying to go with that one-on-one -on -one coverage and just the football is well overthrown trying to get it to Bogardus. So the Buffs will punt again. Koash will kick it away. And Andrew Pitts stands on his own 41-yard line. Booming kick that sends Pitts all the way back to the 25. And then he stopped right as he crosses the 30 yard line. It will be Angelo State football after we take a timeout. Six minutes and 15 seconds remain. The Rams starting to run out of time, but they're not dead yet. We'll take a timeout, come back and it's Angelo State football, 6.15 to play.
And the Buffs lead 24 to 9. We're back after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Jay Ferg Roofing has been protecting our community for 15 years. With more than 30,000 homes and businesses protected by our roofing work, we're proud of our ability to provide efficient, lasting solutions for your roofing needs. What makes us stand out from the competition is that we work for you, a dedicated team member who guides you every step of the way. That is the Jay Ferg Advantage. Quality, experience, fast pass scheduling, customer rewards. We have it all. Call Jay Ferg Roofing today for a free inspection. We are Jay Ferg Roofing. We are more. Here we go. Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium is the Buffs. Look at that score, Bryce. Yeah, 24 to 9. We'll take that. Homecoming. Yeah. And again, I, I love the, the fact the fans, some of them left a little bit because they've had a full day. But it's great to see the large numbers that are still here with 615 left to play here in the ball game. And so, again, uh, great crowd. They've been encouraging and done some nice things here tonight for the Buffaloes. So the defense will come out and see what they can see if they can make another stop. They've played really, I think it's probably been their best game all year, to be honest. I mean, this defense, without has a doubt, play, has played so well tonight. Yeah. And I, I think they've really risen to the occasion against the number 17 team in the country. So Angela State after missing an opportunity getting inside the 10 yard line on their last drive here's a catch made and then the receiver just slides down to get that offense moving it's a good catch made by noah massey <laughs> he slid down because when he looked up there was eric collins that was about ready to lower the boom and smartly just slid down you're saying you would have done the same i would have yes first to 10 bronkhorst good protection now he's going to step up and throw incomplete and again Bronkhorst has struggled tonight, Bryce, when he's been on the run. Yeah, and that's – that's, and I don't know what the injury was when he was out for a few shoulder. weeks, but it was his shoulder. So that tells you a little bit that he's having some some troubles and uh, adjusting to depth a little bit on the run. He's okay in the pocket. It's just adjusting to that depth on the run. It does stop the clock. 5.51 left in the ballgame. Sets in the pocket, throws, and a good adjustment by the receiver to come back and make that catch close to the 40-yard line. Rasheen Green, he's yeah. having a big game tonight. Yeah, Green really did a nice job. A little curl, he goes up and then curls to the inside and then comes back and helps his quarterback out. And the Rams work quickly. New running back in the game, and it's a handoff gain of about three yards over the left side to Kaysen Phillips out of Stephenville. Last week, 125 on the ground, two touchdowns. Wow, wow. nice. Again, a youngster. And it shows the coaches trust the young man because he's in in the fourth quarter in a tight spot. Bronkhorst is hit and sacked. And again, it's number 96, Michael Smith. And he comes over, he's excited, and he's showing his enthusiasm. And Eric Collins comes up and says, Let's walk it back. We don't need another penalty. And so let's walk it back. And nice job. Let's get ready for the next play. Oh, and Bronkhorst just never saw him coming no. from the, uh, the backside pressure. Obviously, he didn't feel that and was not able to release the ball in time. So now it's third down and 14 for Angelo State. Throw is picked off. Ty Dillon at the 20, at the 10. Good night, sweetheart. What a beautiful anticipated interception by Ty Dillon. He read the quarterback all the way that time. The receiver, I don't know if he went the wrong route or what, but it looked like Brockhorst was throwing to a spot, and that spot was Ty Dillon watching him all the way, and he takes that back for a big interception. Nice play on that one by, by Ty Dillon. The officials are getting together again. Now, what are we talking about here? There's a player down in the end zone for Angelo State. What a play. 
by Ty Dillon and give that young man a lot of credit. He had gotten beaten early in the game down the yes, sideline yes. by one of the Angelo yes. State receivers. Bryce, I see that penalty. It's back. It's over on the Angelo State side sideline at the at the 26 yard line. Oh, was yeah. that on the return maybe? Oh boy. Well, well, it must be against Angelo because he's <laughs> Hunter Hughes is saying I want to take it on the kickoff. Sideline interference. It's Angelo State. Okay. Running into a coach. There's a 15 yard penalty to be added onto the So, kickoff. one of the officials running down the sideline ran into an Angelo State coach, and so they called the sideline okay. uh, infraction. Well, what a big interception! by number 30, Ty Dillon returns that one for the score. I'm trying to, the trying to see where he, we don't have the stats nine. updated. No. So. I don't know. It was a, about a 68-yard return. Extra point from Urias is up, and it is good. Defense wins championships, right? Well, tonight, defense is winning this football game for West Texas A&M. 31-9, to nine, Buffs lead Angelo State on homecoming. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this timeout. Stores and windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372 4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. Well, welcome back here to Buffalo Stadium as the Buffaloes get a 60-yard interception from Ty Dillon. And Dillon rumbles up and takes that into the end zone to push with the extra point. The lead to 31-9, and with 424 left to play, that may be... I can breathe a little easier now. I don't know about you anybody else. Tie over there, part my tie here a little bit. That's a 60-yard yeah. uh, interception return. Biggest play of the young freshman's career. Tied Dylan, a true freshman from Round Rock, Texas. And after, that, after the penalty, WT just booms this kickoff out of the back of the end zone. Yeah, this is this is one where, and again, our stats aren't updated right now. But the offensive statistics are not going to be pretty for no. West Texas A&M. No. But. Nobody cares if on WT's side because the scoreboard shows 31 to 9. I tell you what, the defense has played so well tonight, and what a nice rebound game. You can see Hunter right there on the screen, you know, clapping hands and, and everything with everybody out there. He's just got to be thrilled with the way his club, this is the way, and, and again, this is how we expected them to play yeah. this season, and it's good to see them do so here today in a very important Lone Star Conference matchup. So Angelo State goes to work with 424 to play. Throw over the middle incomplete. And Pichot just lost it. And falls to the turf. And this is what Angelo State doesn't want to do. They, they don't want to be in a throwing. They would rather be running the football. But they're so far behind right now, they have to throw the football. And so they're not as comfortable with that. I'm not saying they can't do it. They're just not as comfortable with it. What a game it has been. Bronkhorst delivers the pass, and it's caught. Good tackle after the catch was made. Taylor Hickerson makes the stop after a good pickup, about He's seven been a yards. Great game, yeah. He really has. I just you go through the entire defense, Bryce. I mean, the, the defensive line has done a, a very good job. Michael Smith, Xavier Rivera. Uh, has, has made a lot of plays. The linebackers, all of the linebackers have played well, and then the secondary has stepped up when it needed to. Well, unfortunately, one of the big key stars of the night tonight, too. A little shaken up. Michael Smith will slowly make his way to the near sideline. He also has had a good game with a couple of sacks tonight. Really like the way that he's played here against the Rams this evening. And yeah. First one out there is Nick Gerber to, to say That's pretty cool. done a good job, man. And so, yeah, he appreciates that. 
Here's the run spinning out of the first would-be tackler. Chris Thomas makes a stop. No gain on that play. Is, uh, it just took too long to develop for Odom. And Chris has played well. And again, he missed the last couple of ball games, so it's really good to see him out. We could have used him a lot in the yeah. Colorado Mines game. He would have made a big difference, I think. And really, so you, it's fourth down and three. Essentially, here's the ball game as Angelo State running out of chances. Brockhorst. Throws, oh, juggled a nice caught. catch. Now that's a nice catch. And they're going to say it is a catch. Yeah, he did a nice job because he was backing and falling out of bounds, but was able to catch the football. WT coaches are upset. They feel like he didn't have possession until he was already out of bounds, but right. it doesn't matter. Angelo State will have a first down. They'll move the football up to the 48-yard line, still in Ram territory. And Brockhorst. Will run, escape, pressure, and slide down just short of the first down marker. Well, no, no. they're going to give it to him. They're even because the official wasn't there to see. Yeah, start normally when slide you slide early, it's, it's where you start to slide is where it is. Right. And that official on the far sideline wasn't there. They'd run some receivers deep, so nobody was over there to call, make that call. Some good wheels from Brockhorst on that run. 2.43 to play. Angelo State trailing by 22 points. Bronkhorst throws, catch is made, and slipping the tackle. Rasheen Green gets up the field, gets another first down. Angelo State on the move as WT defensively struggling on this drive. Well, and the other thing, and, I, and again, we don't know because our stats aren't updated. We don't know time of possession in this one, but Angelo's had the football a lot yeah. tonight offensively, so they should have a big edge in the time of possession. And so the defense could be getting a little tired out here as well. Bronkhorst off the back foot throws, catches made by the running back, Phillips, and then he is cut down right there after picking up nearly another first down. It's a gain of nine yards. Locked down to two minutes. So looking to and the Rams are not in a hurry. They should be. I, thought, I was looking to see how many timeouts they had left. Looks like they still have three, so I thought they would take a timeout here. Brockhorst hands it off to Phillips. Huge hole. Phillips at the 10, 5, and strolls into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. And usually when there's that big of a hole, there usually is somebody grabbing a jersey. And nobody was over there for the Buffaloes. And so, again, credit him on the nice run to the end zone. And so we will see Angelo State keep that offense on the field and go for two here. 31-15 the score. They're trying to make it a 14-point deficit. Four receivers to the far side. Bronkhorst waiting for somebody to get open. Throws into the end zone, too high, nearly intercepted. So no good on the two-point try. They'll come back with an onside kick after we take a quick timeout. 1.37 to play in the ballgame. Buffs leading comfortably 31-15 over the Rams. We're back right after this. And don't forget fans to stick around at the conclusion of tonight's game. Who scored that? Cason Phillips. I didn't see how, how far he was at. For 90 years, the Lone Star Conference has been committed to excellence. What began in 1931 as a five-team conference has grown to 18 institutions spanning four states. And while membership has changed, the pursuit of athletic success and academic excellence has never wavered. 119 national championships, over 2,000 All-Americans. Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium as the Buffs in front, 31 to 15, 137 left to play. The good hands guys are up front, anticipating the onside kick. Bryce, you think I may be keeping this? I think you're keeping it. Golden mouth of I'm the South go Trophy. I'm going to go out on a limb with 137. Oh, maybe I'll wait to the onside kick. Be careful. <laughs> be careful, or we're going to get a lot of heat yes, if something yes, bad yes, happens. Yes. Here's the onside. Takes a good bounce, and Tobias nice. Harris just swipes it out of bounds. Flag because it goes out of bounds. But that's a smart so, play. Yeah, that was because no, don't 
he just swiped it, kick it, hit it out of bounds. And so it'll be WT football. And so the offense comes out. Now, Angelo still has three timeouts, so they'll be able to stop the clock. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jordan Johnson come back out on this one as well. Let him rumble with the football. There's a flag on the play. So here's There's the no call. Foul play for legal batting. The ball was batted backwards. And so what they're saying on that particular play is that when it when Tobias hit it, he hit it backwards out of bounds. Okay. If he had hit it forwards, this is like out a, of bounds. This is this a pickleball rule? It's, it kind of is. They've just incorporated it this year. No, it's been around for a while. But if he had hit it forward, then there would have been a penalty. And the official was just trying to get an angle on it. I know yeah. Coach Gers is not happy about it. You know, the viewers think that Bryce Sheets is just making up stuff right now, but he actually pulled out the rule book uh, from his back pocket there. So <laughs> yes, nice work by yes, a color you. analyst. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Gerst is beside himself with the referee. He can't believe, uh, and again, there's no replay to go back and review it. And so the officials just talked it over and they decided that was the case. On first down, here's Jordan Johnson again, the closer here for WT tonight. Man, that's you know, a good run of uh, about four yards. And that's what's nice with Jordan is the fact that you, when you get into this situation, you can just hand him the football and let him close it out. Well, this is going to be a fun evening here for West Texas A&M. There's a fireworks show yes. uh, tonight as well. Yes. And so that's going to be a lot of fun for this home crowd. We'll have a, a little bit shorter of a post game uh, after this. We'll give you some highlights, some stats, and... Second Obviously, have a lot of good things to talk about in uh, what has been a huge win here tonight for WT in about 50 seconds. Johnson starts up the middle, cuts outside, carries a defender with him for a gain two yards shy of the first down marker. Well, I know you saw Jordan this week yeah. as your son was playing football, and he's one of the officials here in the park, and so... I bet your conversation this week will be pretty upbeat with Jordan. Big Good smiles. Yeah. Big smiles from Jordan Johnson. And, and again, personal guys, Neil, is, I should say we take a knee, and that'll be the ball game as the Buffs will win this one over Angelo. And Bryce, I'll say it again, I think this is one of Hunter Hughes' biggest wins uh, in, in his five years here because of, again, what happened last weekend where everybody was – Let's be fair, a lot of people throwing shade at, at WT go on the road and lose that game, but they were ready to play tonight against a good Angelo State team. You know, one of the things I'm seeing here on the sideline, too, as well for the Buffaloes is Will Wagner is going over and hugging a lot. A lot of these are his former players from when he was at Angelo, so he knows a lot of these guys. And, I, and it's nice to see those players come over and respect their former coach and give them a big hug. All right, so the Buffs win this one, the final tonight. 31 to, uh, sorry, the score 15, just went away, 31-15. 31 to 15. 15. 15. Uh, West Texas A&M defeats <laughs> Angelo State and gets the homecoming win. We'll step aside, take a quick timeout, and come back with a quick postgame show. Again, fireworks display uh, here tonight at Buffalo Stadium for you. We're back after this on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network and News Channel 10-2. WT student athletes drink low-fat chocolate milk post-workout because it helps replenish every store muscles quickly to their peak potential. Scientific studies suggest that the immediate benefits of low-fat chocolate milk include boosted performance, improved training, and higher recovery rates in athletes. Add low-fat chocolate milk to your post-workout routine. It's got the looks, the style, 
the performance. Your new car is everything you always dreamed of, and now it's here. First Financial Bank was happy to help put you behind the wheel with a new car loan at a competitive rate and fast, friendly, local approval. It's service that just comes naturally to us, much like a love of tradition comes naturally to you. First Financial Bank, you first. Member FDIC. Welcome to Metadrive Pharmacy, Canyon's hometown pharmacy for over 32 years. We greet you by name, and our pharmacists take the time to counsel you and answer all your questions. Our HealthMart Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, professional service and the highest quality medicines and health products. We accept most insurance plans, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we offer free in-town delivery to your home or business. Come visit us for all your health care needs. Well, welcome back to Buffalo Stadium with the Buffs win this one by final of 31 to 15, improved to 3-3 three and three on the year, but improved more importantly to 2-1 and one in Lone Star Conference play. And Angelo falls to 1-2 and two in Lone Star Conference play. And, and the most important thing about tonight's ball game is that Lucas Kinsey gets to keep his trophy for another year. That's right. Golden, golden <laughs> mouth of the South. I think that basically means we're two guys who talk a lot uh, about sports, but uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, fun fun for uh, the folks at uh, West Texas A&M, and this game tonight, just so impressive, Bryce, for, for WT, and again, it was a, a huge defensive effort, but the offense made some plays when they needed to. Yeah, they really did. I mean, they really at times were there as they were able to move the ball from time to time. Let's take a look at some highlights of tonight's ball game. And again, uh, just an overall great team performance tonight. As we take a look at, this is one of those that is a touchdown for. That's when Angelo State Angelo started out the second started, half. Yeah, they started that movement and were able to get it up and to, to Massey for the score. And that's when they started to come back a little late in the second half. And so they cut the lead, but missed the extra point. The Buffs, though, right here, a nice run by Jared Compton, gets the outside and gets, he does get that left foot on the line. And so that shows that he was able to get into the end zone to push the, the Buffs up in front by count of 24 to nine. And then a little bit later on, on a fourth down, the Buffs make the stop and were able to make that pass incomplete. And so it was WT taking over, able to try to run a little more time off the clock. And then here's this great sack again from Michael Smith as he had two of those tonight. And that one threw them back for a fourth down loss. And then watch this interception right here. Ty Dillon at the 40-yard line. And then it's a foot race to the end zone as Dillon, the freshman, takes it in for the 60-yard return. Yeah. And the Buffs win this one by a final tonight of 31 to 15. Nice job by the Buffaloes coming away with that win in this ball game tonight. And, and the interesting thing here, Bryce, after everything shakes out tonight, WT will set in third place in the Lone Star Conference going into next week. Yeah, that's important because, again, trying to push. We've still got Midwestern State ahead that we've got to face. And next That'll week be, they go to Portales. And, and we go to Portales, the wheel, wagon wheel game. That's going to be important. But hopefully we're going over there with a lot of emotion and a lot of oomph is what we need on our next road game as well. Big thanks tonight as well, of course, to our viewers who are watching on New News Channel 10-2 as the Buffs come away with a win in this one by a final tonight of 31-15. to 15. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you on the next Buff broadcast on News Channel 10-2. The best tailgates start with the best beef. And the best beef starts with Market Street. Market Street, where we do beef the best. 
Jenkins Doors and Windows began serving the Texas Panhandle in 1927, and we take pride in being a part of your neighborhood. We don't use false promises or gimmicks. We simply offer quality doors and windows at a fair price, and we stand behind every sale. Jenkins is family-owned and operated, and proudly continues the traditions of quality and excellence that started over 80 years ago. Call us at 372-4336 or stop by our showroom at 820 West 6th and let our knowledgeable staff help you pick out the perfect doors and windows for your home. When joints begin to fail, it's more than an inconvenience. The relentless grinding pain slows you down and can even stop you from doing the things you enjoy in life. At Physicians Surgical Hospitals, our skilled orthopedic experts are using advanced robotic surgeries to get you back to being you sooner with a less painful recovery. We're doing more than restoring joints. We're restoring lives. Days are built on mornings. And Whataburger is built on burgers. Mornings. Burgers. Morning burgers? Hmm. Yeah. All right. Good thing there's a burger made just for breakfast. Topped with breakfast. The limited time breakfast burger is back at Whataburger. Okay. Welcome back to Jay Ferg Field at Buffalo Stadium. Lucas Kinsey alongside Bryce Sheets and our Thunder Vision crew tonight, which was outstanding uh, providing the coverage for us. And it is a fun, fun homecoming victory Really, everything uh, went the way of the Buffaloes in, in this one, Bryce, and it was a good start defensively. Really, what started the party was a punt block, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. After the Buffs fell behind three to nothing in this one tonight, and it was, let me reach back here and get my Eric notes Goodman. here. Eric Goodman. I had to find out who it was. 51 who came up and blocked the punt, and then got Johnny on the spot was Noah Bacardis, who it was blocked so high. That yeah, was what was, was so interesting. He was waiting for it to come down, and Noah was able to take that in from about 25 yards out. And the Buffs get on the scoreboard and never trail the rest of the way as they're able to get that for a 7-3 to three lead. Then a little bit later on, the Buffs were on a nice drive offensively, and it was Noah Bogardis who catches a Nick Gerber pass from 7 yards out and takes it in from the score, and the Buffs were up 14-3. to three. And then a nice drive right before the end of the uh, first half the buffs were able to settle on a field goal that's pretty loud and uh, they were able to settle on a field goal to make it 17 to 3 at the half and so we were kind of feeling a little bit about colorado mines where the yeah. buffs were up 13 to nothing and and we were a little worried about that but then they come out and they're up 17 to 9 they get another score as Jared Compton, as we saw in the highlights a moment ago, able to take it in from 13 yards out, and we're up to 24 to 9. That was a big response that for was WT. A, I think it was a huge response for West Texas as they are able for the offense to move the ball once again. We The two phases we wanted to see tonight, really, and we saw all three phases, special teams scores the first touchdown of the, right. of the ball game for WT. We saw the offense move, and we saw the defense who was out there a long time, play extremely well. And the defense makes the final, or the icing on the cake, as Ty Dillon picks up that 60-yard interception and returns it for the score. And so the Buffs then in uh, in front by a count of 31 to 9. There is one more Angelo stay score before the end of the ball game, but WT comes away with a 31-15 to 15 win. It was a fun one tonight, and uh, we're going to have this, obviously, the fireworks yeah, display. going on uh, right that, now. It's going to start. We want to mention this fireworks display is sponsored tonight by Lions Realty, also by Home by Lions, and also Nest Insurance. And so uh, the fans are going to enjoy this one. We're, we enjoyed it tonight uh, as well. want to mention our Thunder Vision crew, a great job all night. Your camera operators, Zach Kamenkow, Nicole Williams, also Peyton Stokes, Jacob Johnson, and Emma McReynolds. Your replay operator, a uh, great job on the replays tonight, Jacob Griffin, and our director, Jamie Abbott, uh, doing a great job in the chair. And uh, we also want to thank Chris Jaquist as well. Tonight's broadcast has been uh, brought to you by Texas Farm Bureau. Our final score, WT wins the homecoming 31-15 to over Angelo State. We appreciate everyone watching in tonight on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. For Bryce Sheets, I'm Lucas Kinsey.
and I'm taking home, <laughs> thanks to the Buffaloes, the trophy uh, one more year yet again. We'll see you guys next time here on the Lone Star Conference Digital Network. Good night, everybody.